Welcome back to the Art Cafe. This is episode 106. In this episode, I had a chance to talk with a good friend and an amazing artist, Jama Jurbaev. Jama is a concept artist and art director working in the film industry. He worked in films such as Aladdin, King Arthur, Kong, Skull Island, and Jurassic World, to name a few. Uh, we had a really fun conversation. I hope you're gonna enjoy this one. Let's go. time but the last time we spoke like we spoke in person on the light box yes last year yes which is uh for those who are listening it's the it's the what do you call like what do you call it conference yeah convention Um, convention yeah yeah. convention is the right word it's done by bobby chu yeah Uh, yeah pretty awesome pretty awesome yeah Uh, are you coming this year as well yeah yeah i i told bobby even if you don't invite me i'm coming anyway so he had to invite (laughs) me Yeah, yeah we're just, going to be there too. Yeah, because me and for Andrew. me, it was my first time ever in America, so I was so excited. So that's right. why I, like, <laughs> I, I did like a little tour. I started with New York, and I went to San Francisco. I met Lucasfilm uh, guys and right. island people, and then I, I came over to LA. Did you enjoy America? It's <laughs> it's a tricky question, isn't it? Well, <laughs> you know, like yeah, LA, it's it has some areas, you know, like you know, I was shocked actually, amount of like homeless people. I was like, oh my god, this is like some yeah, places. It's, it's I don't crazy. know what you call it. I keep forgetting about that place. Skid Row. Yeah, it basically looks like a set from Robocop. They shot the movie and then decided to leave <laughs> the set there. You know, like okay, let's yeah, let it's, this it's man messed up, up, man. Yeah, I was, and it's literally like in the middle of the city. You know, you've got skyscrapers, and I was like, yeah. "Wow!" Yeah, for those who don't don't know, Skid Row is like a part of uh, downtown LA, and it's 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 I don't know. It's I, you, you grew up in Tajikistan. I yeah. grew up in Poland during like the Soviet uh, era, yes. and so I mean, I'm pretty sure you you've seen uh, your fair amount of poverty. I've seen a, a fair amount of poverty as well, but I've never seen this amount of poverty in one place, especially in a place where you go a street away, mm-hmm. like literally a block away, you have those gourmet coffee shops with Lamborghinis parked next to it. Right. It's, it's, in, it's an insane uh, place, insane yeah. place. Yeah, I guess that was really shocking, you know. Obviously, I didn't paint any great image in my mind. Anyway, I knew there's some right. dodgy places, but that was a bit like... Yeah, too much, I guess. Yeah, I love Seattle, actually. Seattle was really good because I guess the, I got so used to London's weather. It's great. It's a bit, <laughs> like, cool. Well, uh, LA was sunny all the time, which I, I don't know. Like, it's maybe... Yeah, you get used to it. And then, like, when it drizzles, it's like, oh, man, it's raining again. It's Is like, it? I haven't been raining for a year. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, to be honest, like, I, I, I see, I've seen... Seattle only from like airplane because I, I went to Rich, mm-hmm. uh, Redmond, which is where all the uh, Microsoft guys work. And yeah. Martin, Martin DeChambeau, he was kind enough to uh, invite me to his house. I stayed over his place for two two days. And it's like they live in the woods, man. Like literally, it's like <laughs> almost like hobbits, you know, when they have this like really nice place. And because the woods are massive, like the trees, you, it feels like you're uh, some, somewhere out of city uh, in suburban area which it is but then you travel a little bit and you you have redmond which also has all the skyscrapers and this is where microsoft right is. so right. seattle right, right, right. was probably my, my favorite out of <laughs> but i'm gonna come back i, I enjoyed it like I was, my first one was new york and that one didn't go well i have the story when i needed a haircut obviously i don't know the city i just saw the, the sign and i walk in and I, walk, <laughs> and I walked out and the bill was 150 dollars <laughs> apparently it was a fancy one you know with like all wood like covered and with you just wood. got a buzz <laughs> and it's crazy and also the tipping system you have to tip in in u.s like you have to tip oh, yeah. in UK as well but not like 25 percent, whatever the number is so 
yeah, yeah it's not it's not necessarily you have to but it's expected of you you know it's a very rude thing not to tip and i think mostly it's because there's the taxation system like they've set it up so that you have to pay taxes on tips that you haven't received either really so it's like yeah i, I think i i might be completely uh bullshitting here so i don't know but uh that's what i've heard like you know because of taxes like if you're not getting tipped you're actually getting screwed very interesting um, and like the the wages are uh, in europe the wages are sort of like covering mm -hmm. uh the bottom line here like if you're a waitress or like you know if you're in the service industry without tipping like tipping just can add up to be uh, your major part of income you know mm -hmm. again i might be bullshitting because i've never worked in the service industry in in this in this country with the tipping system so i'm just kind of parroting what i've heard um gotcha. but it would make sense right yeah but you no. know the the, mm -hmm. the the positive side is you get a good uh you usually get a good customer service yes yeah like it was really good. good customer service that, that was good exactly yeah so yeah my, nice and all that you know my it was a fun journey you know like it i spent solid two days and yeah coming back in this september uh it, let's see how the whole coronavirus thing pans out you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's, no, it's no. a booming right now yes Everyone's getting sick, dude. I woke up uh, last morning with like you know a little uh, little little nosy here, you yeah. know, a little, little drippy. It's like, is that Corona? <laughs> yeah. Uh, turns out I didn't sleep enough um, yeah. for past week. That's and, for, you know. for, for past year, you would say, right? <laughs> past year. <laughs> yeah, you know, I do have. My body got tired. Like occasionally, I would just get random like flu symptoms and i don't know why am i getting this? and then i realize i've been grinding like for months you know and i'm not sleeping yeah. your body just gives up you know it goes like hey dude you gotta lay yeah. down for a couple of days so occasionally it would happen to me too yeah yeah correct i'm on the same boat man on the same boat once you're like overwork yourself it's it gets to a point where it's like oh shit yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I shouldn't be complaining. Most of the time, it's not like someone is forcing me. I'm just, no, I just, no, like, yeah. I just like so into it. Like I, I go and start sculpting and doing VR, and I realize, holy shit, that's two, two a.m. Right? Like I gotta go to right. bed. So, so let me ask you this, actually, like because you you touched on that subject. Like, okay, I, I mean, every now and then you have those times where you're you're putting your yourself into like extra work because yeah. either you want to do it or you have to do it. Like, yeah. you know, everyone's life's different. But I've noticed, like, even if I'm not working for clients, even if I'm like chilling, I'm 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 good, I'm set with my current projects and whatnot. I still like force myself to do extra stuff yeah. for no reason. Do you do that as well? Same here, man. But <laughs> I guess, like, you know, there was a point, actually, like, I uh, I asked my wife, I was like, is something wrong with me? Like, I'm always in front of, like, the computer. Not always, but I'm always so into it, you know? I was, like, thinking right. maybe something is wrong with me. And she pretty much went, like, shut up. Like, with a lot of people <laughs> who, like, w would be willing to do what you do because it, it looks like you're really enjoying it, you know? And that's kind of your main income as well. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I guess like, I do think sometimes I work too much, but then in the end, it's fun, you know, it's not like, it's less right. physical than it could be. So, yeah, you're, you have the luxury of saying, you know what, I can stop at any moment if I want to, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. But you've been working to get to that point, um, like real hard for really, I mean, not really long time, but, but for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, you know, because the whole situation, like I'm coming from Tajikistan, it, it, it wasn't easy at all. Like I think like we talked about it last podcast we had. Um, yeah. It's just like because there's no industry. And I actually just wrapped up my recent course with my students yesterday. And uh, I just uh, mentioned this to them that, uh, it, you know, most of them are concerned that the, these days it's so like, hard to get into industry, you know, the competition. Com Obviously, competition is way higher than it used to be. But then I yeah. also reminded them, guys, like when we started out, there was literally no resources, right? Like in my country, internet was so terrible, I couldn't even afford load downloading like videos from online, right? YouTube wasn't <clears> even <throat> out there. So now these days, you you have all the oops, pardon, you have all the courses, you have all the stuff. Um, that's why I don't think the situation dramatically changed. It's just like it evolved into something more competitive but then uh, right uh, you have more resources to learn from you can 
basically directly get in touch with people who work in industry, which was very difficult way back when when we started. Almost impossible, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, you would have to rely on the grace of 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 an artist that is already busy. <laughs> And on like the highest level to reply to some random person in in Eastern Europe. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, Which I, normally you would just like, oh, some Eastern Europe. Like, you know, I mean, it sounds uh, this, you know, condescending. But when you get emails from clients, emails from friends, emails from services that you need to use or whatever, mm -hmm. like that, your 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 mailbox just starts to like get littered and it's very difficult to carve out, carve out time to reply to everything you see. And once you really get popular as well, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm not a, like, I'm not personally on a level where, where I get mess like direct messages all the freaking time. So I'm trying to reply to as many as I can, but I know some, some of the artists that we know pretty well as well that are just like, I, man, I cannot even look at my, my mailbox sometimes <laughs> just, just too much. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you need like a manager to, yeah. to come through. Exactly. Everything. And otherwise, you won't have time for work. Yeah. I always kind of, when I, as just as you, like, I, I'm willing to help, but sometimes the questions are either too deep, you know, like it's just something that you need to probably have like a full home face to face conversation with the person. Right. Correct. Or there are just too many questions, right? Like, I always keep uh, joking about it. Like when I, whenever I do workshops, I, you guys, you, you've got a better chance to get a reply from me if you just ask me how to create a coupon blender, right? Because I go like shift A, <laughs> create a coupon, right? It's fast. It's just, and I do that. Like, hey, how do you like do this? Like, if, but when the questions go deeper, it's hard, man. You know, some people, yeah. I do understand the need uh, that uh, they coming to you with that they want to hear your opinion on something, but the questions being deep, that, that deep and that complex just make it makes it even impossible to yeah. even say anything on that topic yeah so sometimes sometimes like even the most simple question like you can get the simple fuck off answer you know <laughs> but that's not the way to go yeah, like, you yeah, don't want to exactly. you don't want to dismiss the person like that that's and true. if you want to be genuinely answering them to help them <laughs> like oh man like i would have to spend at least an hour to do that and i don't have that luxury in my day you know because one hour, one hour in, in for that one email means I'm not spending one hour with my family mm -hmm. that I have carved out of my busy day. Yeah. Or I, I'm not spending this one hour to actually, you know, how to relax and not mm -hmm. think about anything and, and just like mm -hmm. ease my mind. So I'm ready for w what's next to come. Um, yeah, it can get it can get difficult. And I think, I, uh, you know, I used to think when I was a young artist, and I'm pretty sure you were the same way, where you would email your favorite artist, you wouldn't get a reply, you'd think, oh, this is, he's a douchebag, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but but then, like, once you once you get um, popular enough, you realize, okay, um, the it's more yeah, the more you different. do, the more the more things come your way, and it's very difficult to, That's to handle true. it all. That's true. And I also think, like, again, like, coming from my experience with students and... In general, I think it's great that now these days you can ask anyone, but this is something we just recently talked about. People get used to just asking other people, not trying to find the answer by themselves. So right. Like, yeah. You get the those problem questions. and you go, like, hey, how did you do that? Right. Like, how did you do that? Like, that's where I felt so lucky because I didn't pretty much have anyone around me. Uh, so. I had to grind, you know, I, and yeah. if I had to know something about color theory, I had to really understand it and it pays off. You know, once you understand everything from inside out, you basically like have a much stronger fundamentals. But once you, when you learn from like, oh, this guy did it, let me ask him, he obviously would tell you, then it's just using learning tricks, which is also important, but it's all about balance. You know, I've, I've seen a big tendency these days just to learn tips, you know, like, Oh, how did you do that stone texture? Oh, I did this, blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, instead of actually asking different questions, you know, like how to make things realistic or how to control your composition and all that stuff. Right, so right. I agree could, with it, you. It on could this. be a dangerous path in a way. A lot of information and it basically, basically m makes people not lazy, but they don't want to spend too much effort to learn something. And when you do that, that, do that, I believe you're just crashing the surface instead of like, getting deeper into subject right it's like the learning just just so that you feel like you're busy mm -hmm. learning but what you're doing you're just acquiring knowledge that mm -hmm. is not necessarily translating to anything and if you're not practicing what you mm -hmm. learn 
you're, you're forgetting it like right away. Exactly. It's almost similar um, to like to learning a language, right? You can learn right. words here and there, but to be able to speak and come up with the complex sentences, you kind of need to learn the fundamental core of that language. Yeah, I mean, you you're not an English like uh, a native English speaker, n- nor am I. And mm-hmm. you know, like once you get out of like English speaking environment for longer than a week, mm-hmm. you come back and you sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. For me, it's really hard because I consider my native language is Russian because my mom is Russian, right. and my dad used to live in Russia. We speak, we always spoke Russian, uh, Russian at yeah. home. And then my like. My nation language, I would say, is Tajik, which is Farsi. Um, but I, I lived in Turkey for t- more than 10 years. So I right. guess my second language would be Turkish. And now, obviously, it's almost been 10 years here in London. So English is getting it to some level. So sometimes my head is just <laughs> like a mess. You know, my brain is just a mixture <laughs> of all those. Because every language has different nuances. You know, the way the yeah. intonation and the way you say things. Uh, and it's, uh, look, occasionally I go to these workshops, and every workshop I go, I meet a, like a Russian-speaking and a Turkish-speaking person, like most of the time. And then you right. obviously speak English, and just like switching all, on and off those kind of uh, languages becomes very tricky, hard. Yeah, you, st- you you slowly morph into like the Blade Runner language. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the original yeah. Blade Runner, yeah. where, you, where you use like four languages all at once. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I yeah. should have been complaining at least, like my brain brain keeps running you know no but you were you were on point with the tips and and learning you know like it's it's very easy to get yourself busy thinking you're doing something Mm -hmm. i find i found that the best way to learn at least for me is to learn with purpose for a specific project right so you you work on something whether it's a client project uh, or your personal i mean personal project is probably the best because you have the luxury of time if you're working with client then you have to be like really diplomatic with your schedule so that you're, it's it's not it's benefiting benefiting the work, uh, and it's not um, hindering your performance, right? Yep. Um, I think that's that's sort of like the best way to approach it. But also, like if I, I feel like if you're if you're just starting and and you know you don't have a foundation of of uh, of like the foundation for art uh, figured out yet, mm-hmm. searching for tips is not a right way to go. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of pretty much always say the same thing. You know, a lot of times people come to me and say, like, hey, how do you come up with all those like things? You know, it looks like I'm always trying to find new ways of doing things, or at least like experiment. And I always say, like, I never actually experiment. I didn't have a luxury just to, like, it's, I, I don't have mornings when I wake up and go, like, okay, what shall I learn today, <laughs> right? Like, it's exactly what you said. Right. I, I've got specific uh, projects I'm working on or potentially I could work on. And I know that there could be obstacles of certain type on my way. And that's why, like, even if I practice, I try to learn something that I can apply to my work. And that's the best way to learn it because you have more ch- more chances to practice it a few more times afterwards mm-hmm. and obviously monetize it in a way. So instead of just learning, like, random things. And, but I do yeah. remember myself when I first discovered, like, Gnomon uh, School, I was like, I'm going to watch every video those guys publish. <laughs> rigging skinning and i watched a lot of them at least i had an idea what this is about you know when i started doing concept art obviously i never became an expert in any of those so right uh, yeah especially when you're starting out foundation that's fundamentals it's what you start from because once you have that the tools they keep evolving well now we have blender everybody's oh blender is great tomorrow we'll have another software which will be better than blender or another version of blender you know it's just right. the tools are constantly <clears throat> evolving you know as long as you have solid foundation you just the rest is just like a skin on top you just wear whatever you you need so yeah that's correct <laughs> to, to tools are great to learn if but but not to be mm-hmm. too attached to them because they change and evolve all the time exactly you know, i had my my stint with blender recently mm-hmm. i actually you know actually gave it like an actual legit try mm-hmm. on one of my projects where i you know from last year i was learning a little bit of last year mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I found, I found some things that were really encouraging and then positive and mm-hmm. others that were just kind of frustrating. Mm-hmm. Like the most frustrating part for me is like relearning things. Yeah. Um, because like, I already know how to do this there. Now mm-hmm. I have to re- relearn it here. And mm-hmm. like the philosophy behind it is completely different and it's, yeah. it's frustrating. Like you're used to do something 
uh, in one one particular way for a long, long time, it almost becomes like in, engraved in you. Mm -hmm. And then you have to change your philosophy all of a sudden. And then simple things that you would normally get from your workflow mm -hmm. become like frustratingly difficult to find or not explained enough. And that was yeah. that was like the main reason I stopped learning it. Mm. But I recently came back and, you know, I used it on the actual commercial project. I, I knew enough that um, I was like, hmm, why, what, what would happen if I use Blender for this one, right? Mm -hmm. So I booted up, I've uh, set up a scene, it's like, okay, it actually works perfectly, you know? It, mm -hmm. it, it worked for that one specific part of the project that I mm -hmm. needed it for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously I would spend, I would spend, <laughs> it was funny because, Half of the time, I'll be working on the on that scene, uh, mind you, for for a commercial project. Mm -hmm. I would be googling stuff, you know, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like how to X Y and Z, how to X Y and Z, yeah. how to X Y and Z. Yeah. And I was like, I, I was asking myself, am I am I wasting time? Mm -hmm. Because like, if you're if you're learning as you go, that might be not a most uh, not the best way to do a project, right? But then the I, I looked at it like the speeds of because I was using Eevee specifically yeah. specifically that's why I set it up mm -hmm. in the scene um, Eevee was just very good for that one particular scene that I needed mm -hmm. needed it for versus if I would use normal route of using 3ds Max and V-Ray mm -hmm. I would have that scene set up much quicker yes. but the iteration process would be longer longer sure. and it wasn't complex scene right if it was like super complex you know i would probably stick around with 3ds max and v-ray mm -hmm. because like the performance um mm -hmm. but but it wasn't a complex scene and it was just working perfectly so so that was like a good example for me okay like i, I can see mm -hmm. um a benefit of, of of doing that you know yeah 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 no absolutely agree with you i'm gonna say something this is very unpopular opinion though <laughs> yeah go ahead and the the, the the your channel will explode after this <laughs> i actually i'll clip it uh, well, you know, I love Blender. I'll clip it as a highlight. Yes, I, I love Blender. <laughs> I love Blender. And I have a couple of other, my favorite programs, like if it's VR, Gravity right. Sketch, I like Medium. I like 3D Code more than ZBrush, for example, just personal opinion. But for, I don't attach myself too much. You know why? Whenever you become too like a fanboy of something, you be, you stop being objective. Like Blender has tons of problems. <laughs> Like performance, I I was yeah. saying this since I first time ever tried it. <clears throat> Guys, performance is not as good as other uh, packages. So obviously they're working on it. So I'm not like I'm yeah. not doing like <laughs> I'm not gonna be like uh, boycotting it. But I think like I can see this a lot, and that's why I call this very unpopular opinion. I see a lot of people attaching too much themselves to a specific package. Right? Wait, you're saying you're not in cult. Well, I'm not in cult because I think cult is a dangerous <laughs> thing. Cult is a place where people become uh, stop being objective, and also it's dangerous because whenever you say something against it, they bash you. That's yeah. why, like, <laughs> I will take the courage to say that. But I'm not in Blender cult. I love Blender, but if I, I stay objective, that I takes a lot stay. of courage, dude. <laughs> yeah, for example, sculpting. Like I've been sculpting for like solid two months. No, no, I've been sculpting for more than t like I would say eight years or so. But seriously, like I sat down, I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and I, I'm gonna do my homework, the <clears> fundamentals. <throat> and I started. Mm -hmm. I, I I I try a lot of ZBrush. I see where it's good at. I see where Pretty Code is good at, and I see where Blender is good at. But obviously, there are some pros and cons. And that's, yeah. I have to stay objective. It's not like, I don't want to spend some doing something in a software which is not good at something, right? It would, yeah. like for example, in your case, if you have a large ass scene that you need to run on Blender, that would probably cost you a lot of nerves, you know? And also, yeah, how many million polygons you think uh, uh, you can work no, with No, actually Blender, Blender is super good with polygons. It's not the polygonic amount that makes it performance drop it's actually a combined thing you know when you have realistic textures but also i realize because i teach blender in my courses and mm -hmm. the sometimes students come up with these giant scenes because ev is so tempting you know like it's not unreal but people want it to be unreal they want to build this whole thing right just yeah i've through, noticed that you know you, you just become greedy too much so once you know your limits it actually perfect for what it is but obviously because we are trying to push it to like a very limits we want everything in real time, basically. It's, it's not <laughs> possible, right? So it's yeah. pros and cons. And that's why I, I seriously, like, I do have my favorite software, but 
I, I, I never get to attach. If they want my help, I'm here to help. But if they want me to hear something objective, I would always say that. I would say, guys, right. I need this too. Otherwise, it becomes a lot of fanboying. Nobody sells, uh, really has the courage to say anything. And they never improve it, right? They just like, okay, we'll just, people say nothing. We'll just keep going but like that. Yeah, 3DS Max was, I think, in, for a long time, was in a phase <laughs> of like, uh, always uh, chasing for features, 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 features. And then, you know, I think I, I was talking with Fausto and, uh, I think he was doing some beta testing and, and always complaining, guys, just just fix the performance. It's shit, you know, fix the performance, fix the performance. Mm -hmm. And they finally listened. Mm -hmm. And the 2020 is just like a night and day compared to what it was before. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, speaking of Blender and funboyism, you know, like uh, I do Instagram stories every now and then. Yeah. And uh, I posted I posted a screenshot of Blender. Uh, and <laughs> with exploded, the text right? with the text joining the cult yeah i had so many dms <laughs> oh my yeah. god i was like what the hell is going on why is everyone messaging me yeah <laughs> listen i love blender i, I never I, get I, dms I from any of my stories dude yeah <laughs> Almost, i personally you know? also appreciate the the effort man for the free package man they have like some yeah really genius guys behind the software and i personally know a lot of them you know like now they mm -hmm. have pablo who's uh, doing the sculpting dude this stuff he did recently this did this cloth brush have you seen it it's yeah like, i saw a little bit of it, yeah. i was like whoa that's great but obviously it's still not it has a long way to go in terms of like especially like right now i'm doing a lot of sculpting and i realize that there's a lot of great things you can sculpt it in it but it's not it doesn't have the perfect pipeline like ZBrush has. You know, ZBrush has very specific yeah. things, like the masking is under one click and extracting geo. Like there's a lot of great things, you know. And you you gotta stay objective if you, if you want to make it. If they want to make good tool, you know. And I I, I think me being objective actually will allow them if they open to listen if they open to listening to the users. That could be benefit both sides, you know. Yeah, I've noticed this with 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 Eevee, What you said, like you know, the performance of once you start adding too many textures and whatnot, it's like ah, uh, it's actually not not real time at all. Because like, if you want to have a good quality uh, preview, you you have to compute the irradiance maps mm -hmm. and whatnot, and that takes a lot of time. Once you wanna like, once you have scene set up and you want to render, you pr press that F F twelve. And it takes a little bit of time to compute the scenes. It's not like it's all, it's not, as you said, it's not unreal, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was like thinking, okay, so for small scenes where I don't have to deal with any of that, it's perfect. It, it actually works perfectly because everything is almost at your finger, fingertips ready to go. But for larger scenes, as I said, like I found the wall, mm -hmm. you know, whether it was the amount of polygons, I, I, it's not, as you said, not necessarily the amount of polygons, but the amount of objects that have different textures that have yeah. different IDs and whatnot, that starts to add up and creates, it creates like this giant hog that is just very difficult to deal with yeah. uh, in Blender. Whereas like, uh, you know, I, I build scenes for, for my film and, and, uh, in 3ds max and a lot of times i go over 10 million 20 million polygons and no issues it just it just runs obviously it renders slower than ev and all that stuff but it doesn't matter because like i can iterate on editing and, and whatnot almost in real time without worrying that something is going to crash or it's going to like stop and or, or any of those things right yeah. but as you said just just i mean it's a free software you yeah. know like yeah. just just that just that alone yeah. Um, I think we're reaching the point where software becomes less of an issue. Like wh whether you learn this or that doesn't matter anymore, mm -hmm. really. It's, you know, Blender, I would say, like if anyone asked me, hey, uh, what's the software to learn? I've never done any 3D. I go Blender, like uh, f for sure. It's mm -hmm. free. Like you cannot go wrong. It's already very good. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, there, there, there are professionals using it mm -hmm. uh, in, in film, video games, whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but if someone says like, hey, try 3ds Max, it's like, oh no, 3ds Max is too expensive. Uh, no, it isn't. It's actually less expensive than Photoshop right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and same with Maya. And I, I actually, I don't know about Maya, but like most of the 3D packages are very affordable now. Like they are <laughs> nowhere as expensive as they were when you and I were learning. You yeah. know, remember the times where yeah. when 3ds Max cost like six thousand dollars if you wanted to right. buy it? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah, times and, are changing. Yeah, and hopefully they will keep improving it. It's just, I, I guess, like, 
Oh yeah. Also with Blender, it was a good wake up call, you know. So I can see like Autodesk and other guys they're reacting to it. You know, they want to yeah. uh, introduce some need. Well, that's what I need. That's what we need. You know, once we have a competition, it's just a healthier environment for everybody. You know, you get a better products because as an artist, you pay the money for your subscription. You expect some certain tools in return. You know, and when you're not getting those, despite the fact that you were asking for them for ten years, it's a bit like weird i would say but again i'm not staying attached uh, whoever needs help i'm always there but right there are certain things that i can do faster in any other program i will just switch and do yeah it, you know i also never understand the the logic of 100 percent i let's say photoshop 100 percent uh maya or 100 90 percent blender 10 percent photoshop one percent <laughs> Uh, but like if something else, you know, it's oh, almost like, like breaking it down to percentages. Yeah, it doesn't okay. matter, man. It just like doesn't really matter, you know. Especially no, it's the, not. The, once you get up to the point, you know exactly what you're doing. You always juggle, you know. You go like, okay, this is better for this. I can do this. Yeah. I would love to have one package where I can do everything, but it's a very difficult task, you know. So uh, if some if, if there is a package that does certain things better than other, I will just use it. And yeah, I, I think that's important to know, like just just getting, getting too attached to software, like you're getting you're giving um, too much credit to the tool. I mean, obviously, give a credit to a tool because you're using it uh, for what you, what you love doing. And without it, it would be much more difficult to do it on paper and whatnot. I mean, at the end of the day, you can pick up pen and paper and then just credit your pen, you know, like no nobody credits. Pen. I mean. Actually, they do. People do <laughs> credits like, "Oh, I got this brand of pen," yeah. which is exactly same as the other brand, but it's it it looks Japanese, so I'll promote it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And again, my my biggest um, concern is just actually it becomes like a cult, you know. Like even yeah. me right now saying those things could offend someone. Like, oh, what do you mean? I put we are all in Blender. Well, yeah, I'm all in. I'm doing a lot of Blender stuff, but I'm not in the cult. Because I'm always trying to stay objective in the end. It's just, a, right. you know, it's not like, so in a way, it becomes like a religion, isn't it? Like once you say something against, they bash you. <laughs> so it's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 at least I don't want to be a part of that. So Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to um, corner yourself to confirmation bias either. You know, like mm -hmm. only listen to people who support your idea that that's that's the only one and only way to go, and ignore everyone else. Because you know, sometimes, sometimes uh, you're gonna put yourself in the corner where you f you think like you 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 got it all figured out, and then someone comes in l a year later and like throws throws a wrench to everything you you believed in, believed in, mm -hmm. and then it's like, oh, I wasted a year. Mm -hmm. like thinking in the completely wrong ways you know mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. but I also on top of that i would add something uh, just to clarify you know i also think there's a lot of when people trying to do something and they get bashed straight away you know like <laughs> let's say like i don't know x program is trying to do something you know and just because it's not as good as in other program people ah you go try that one just <laughs> like give those guys a little bit of room right like Right. Let them try, let them do something, and then see how it pans out. Otherwise, it becomes, you know, just demotivating everyone from the very... Like, remember, I don't remember if you remember the times when ZBrush out, everybody hated it, right? Like, it was <laughs> so, like, clunky. I mean, still some of that is remaining in the program, but now everybody loves it. So, uh, it's just, like, collective effort and a little bit of support from community does magic. Yeah. You know, I I think it's uh, I, I think it comes down to what kind of crowd you are, um, you know, surrounding yourself with, and it doesn't doesn't I, I feel like it doesn't necessarily um, limits it limits itself to software. Like w we talk about, you know, being cultist with specific pieces of software, or as you said, people like someone starting, uh, you know. Oh, I'm I'm picking up. Uh, what was that software that Autodesk did? Mudbox, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I modeled it in Mudbox, and you have a bunch of like ZBrush nerds <laughs> <laughs> jumping in and like, oh, ZBrush is is this and that. It's like, it, yeah, I know, I, I know how ZBrush works. Or like, Blender guys comes in, like, oh, you can do it in Blender too. It's like, I, I, yeah, I get it, but yeah. I wanted to try Mudbox, you know? Yeah. Um, I think I think it's just a matter of what kind of people you are surrounding yourself uh, with and listen to, because I think it also applies to to everything else. You know, like you might be, let's say you're an illustrator and, and you want to try something with the animation or, you know, um, 
Oh, remember you were, uh, what, what, what was the year you, you actually joined uh, the industry? Let me, let, remind me, remind me of 2011? that. 2011. Okay. So you were a little bit past that, 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 that moment where everyone was, okay. So back, no, back I in mean, 2000. No, I started working in 2011, but I was, I started out maybe in 2000, late 2008 or something like that. Okay. So you were like on the, on the, on the, on the very end of, of that. If you're using photos, you're an evil person. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it started all in like 2004. I, I mean, I'm, I, I've noticed it because I, that's when I started and maybe started sooner than that. But, you know, like everyone would be posting sketches and illustrations and then people would hide the fact that they're using photos because of the stigma of like, oh, you used photos, you cheater, you know, and then someone found out that that Craig Mullings is using photos oh, no. on everything he does. And you would have some nerds just like, and eh, nah, he's using photos and like breaking down. It's like, yeah, but he made thousands of dollars doing that. And you, and you're sitting there with, you know, in your, in your mom's basement complaining about it. Yeah. Uh, and then it's kind of went away right after, Yeah. you know, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, but that's just like, to me, it's a testament. Like maybe that's the kind of people you shouldn't listen to, you know? Oh no, absolutely. Well, I never listened to anyone except like a little circle of people I trust. Right. I just always do my own thing because in a way for me, it actually was, I had, I, I never explicitly experienced that, but I did try a lot of new things, which I thought like, okay, you can do this, this stuff here, but how about this? Right. And when you put it out, people like, like you would say, Hey, why would you do that here? Try this one. Everybody's using that. Right. It's some, but guys, it's my life. I use whatever I want. Right. And right. if my logic <clears throat> tells me that there is a better way of doing something like yeah, people, overall, you know, there's this concept, uh, people don't like changes, you know, like they love equilibrium. Whenever there's a little bit of right. disturbance, like society tries to calm it down. So let's say, again, if you, everybody's sculpting in ZBrush, you're trying something else. Like it's not, they have like any kind of bad intentions. It's just naturally they try to pull you back. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but I started sculpting ZBrush recently, and I like it, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, I've, just it. just like yourself, I've been using, I've been trying Blender, I've been I've been doing, you know, 3D code and ZBrush, and each of them have their own strengths. You know, yeah, there are certain things I would never try doing in ZBrush, and they are very easy to do in in 3D code. Yeah. Versus there are certain things I would never try to do in 3D code because ZBrush is just so much better at it. Yeah. And I'm familiar with all of them enough to mm -hmm. just jump in and you know s switch back and forth and mm -hmm. and just make it happen mm -hmm. i think the best allure uh and, and we can maybe finish talking about software yeah, we, should. we should with talk. that but the best allure of, of 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 blender is the fact that you have all of those you know aspects of of of, of life you know modeling and and, and sculpting and mm -hmm. scene creation and all that, all that stuff in one package which is fantastic you don't have to like you don't have to like go z or uh, you know, That's transfer true. scenes to to different places to 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 finish the scene, right? Mm -hmm. But then you don't have, you, you still don't have V-Ray, uh, in in the way it works with you know with 3ds Max or Arnold or mm -hmm. or even Octane, you know, like those powerful um, rendering engines. Of of course you have cycles, but man, like it, it looks great. It renders slow as fuck. Like <laughs> let's just like not forget that, right? Um, so yeah it's it's awesome but don't be cultist i guess <laughs> yeah i i guess like again if you say don't be cultist you in a way pr promoting another cult which is don't be cultist cult right, <laughs> right i, yeah, I yeah, always yeah. say guys do whatever you want don't just don't listen exactly to just don't listen exactly. to anyone obviously after this everyone should stop listening to this podcast but just listen to guys that you respect <laughs> dude That's you should I... do a podcast why, why not i uh, know i don't have Talent, you know, it's like we were say. talking about we were talking about people reaching out mm -hmm. and asking questions. Like sometimes, sometimes having um, uh, an outlet like this, and obviously, I'm not gonna coerce you to like, hey, you should do a podcast. Like you, you're gonna do it what you want to do, right? You That's have true. to like feel like you want to do. Mm -hmm. I was trying to convince uh, my friend and and my business partner Andrew to like you know help me out either with the podcast or maybe we should do a podcast together or something because because you know we have funny conversations sometimes and he's just not the kind of person that wants to podcast yeah. like yeah. there's no no matter how much i'm gonna try he's just not gonna it's just not gonna do it you know mm -hmm. um
but it's a it's a good outlet to like you know of, oftentimes someone asks a question it's like hey actually you know what this this question that would take me forever to answer you mm -hmm. check this episode find it there oh, that's a good because i remember think. yeah because i remember like i i I'll, every now and then i get like those questions about immigration and how to get uh how to how to work in the united states mm -hmm. and do i have to work in united like what 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 is it it's just such a complex question yeah you have to go through all of the you know legal stuff and i'm not a legal like i'm not a uh, attorney or, or, or lawyer uh, n none of that so like none of my questions are like legally like i cannot give you legal advice whatnot but hey i actually had a, a lawyer immigration lawyer on my podcast so watch that episode yes he probably answered the, all the questions you're gonna have you know that's a good idea actually so, yeah Perfect. yeah it, it becomes but, really, really you know, helpful then you will have to go and listen to podcast find exactly the time when when they have you on the tip of their hands, right? Why would you do that, Anche? No, hey, I don't be lazy. <laughs> yeah, I understand you. I understand you. And again, like again, let's just wrap it up. But in terms of, I maybe like there there are definitely people who just don't want to help you. That's for sure. But most of the people right. they would love to help, but the questions are too complex. Yeah, like yeah. the whole immigration thing. It's like a solid two hour conversation on the topic, you know, because there's so many different aspects of it. You know, is it the talent visa? Or is it a working visa, or is it like a another type of stuff? So yeah, that's a good point. I, I actually did a uh, there's a friend of mine, Ma Max Kostenko. We did a uh, podcast together in Russian. That was very fun to do. So maybe we can do something. Again. Yeah, like it's it's not for everyone, you know. Like you just have to. It's one of those things where you just have to like to do it, you know. I I find it. I, I mean, I started doing art cafe, what like five years ago now, maybe mm -hmm. six. And it's, it's been like a lot of on and off. This is like actually the first year where I'm trying to, for real, trying to make, make the podcast more of a regular thing mm -hmm. instead of like sprinting and doing three episodes in a week and then like disappearing for six months, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm not doing those lives anymore, live anymore, because it's so difficult to line up uh, mm -hmm. people to do the live show. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things that can go wrong. And unless it's a, it's a part of your business where you're actually doing it as a part of the work where you have time and resources to scramble and do things it's very difficult to align and, and then you, you miss one week and then like oh i might miss another week it's just like just becomes a hassle whereas if, if it's recorded i can prepare mm -hmm. get questions ahead of time and like all of that stuff just makes it much 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 easier yeah so i totally yeah. agree with you uh, let me ask you this. I mean, we kind of spoke about it, uh, spoke about it uh, when you were first time, but you were the first time uh, you were here, you were actually with uh, Alex Brady, right? Like we, you guys were together, uh, you and her. No, um, I think first time I was here with uh, Nadia. Nadia oh, Mogilev. Oh, that was maybe uh, Levi Petterfee. That was probably, yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. you were in, with Nadia. Yes. Uh, yeah, I remember that um yeah we i mean we i think we only briefly talked about it but i i, I want to you know because i like again it comes back to uh, to questions that happen every now and then you know there's always this this question like oh i'm i'm 18 years i, we, I was actually talking about this with mm -hmm. aaron mm -hmm. on my previous episode you know there's like 18 19 like 17 year old kids coming in he, he was uh, he was actually saying that there was kids coming in. It's like, oh, I'm 17. I don't know what I'm gonna do with my career. My, my life is ruined. You know, it's like, oh wait, what? You're 17. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> yeah, the, the, um, I do get those as well. I, it's it's tricky, isn't it? Like my me personally, myself. Like I started when I was 25. Like it's not like I started first at 25. I realized, oh, there is this concept art that I can do, right? Yeah. Before that, I was just like doing my engineering stuff I, I would see like pictures online but i never thought like it could be real right profession to do and at 25 i've like literally the first time i ever picked up a wacom pen and i was like okay i'm gonna be a painter and i yeah i made a few brushstrokes and i realized oh my god like, i'm far <laughs> away from being a painter right <laughs> so it took another six solid years before i, I could get my first paid gig so yeah, yeah. so then, you were almost 30 when, when yeah, you I was actually started I, working i was 31 yeah when it was exactly yeah there you go nine years ago so yeah 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 i remember that because we worked together on uh on like 10 or well, not eight years ago yeah was it eight years ago yeah we worked together it, it, on the guardians it, it, of the galaxy yeah it, uh, it was 12 uh, 2012 isn't it 
but it's yep, the Guardians yep. of the Galaxy. Yeah, that was actually my first film gig as well. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I <laughs> You're already crushing it. Yeah, I was in commercials before. Yeah, I was just in a lot of commercial work. Right. Advertising. And <clears throat> yeah, this is where my passion to film started. So since then. Yeah. But that's kind of shows you shows you like, okay, you know, you're 30 years old. It's not too late. You know, it, mm -hmm. it never is, especially now with uh, like, I, I want to hear your opinion about this. Because <laughs> um, like, so we, we, we spoke about, uh, we talked about just just moments ago about how competitive the market became, but also how <laughs> easy it is to learn. Um, and the only thing I would want to add to it is also, you know, stylistically, mm -hmm. you can do a lot of things. You don't have to like conform to what's the newest trend and you can still become successful. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest avenue for that is uh, social media. Yep. And social media by itself, uh, like it turned from people realize quickly realized i think uh, are realizing that you know it's it's not just to talk with friends it just became one of the best platforms to promote share yourself. your business yeah. and promote yourself and become a business as well you mm -hmm. know and actually make a living doing that i want to hear you what you think about that and if it, it, like how is how is that in your opinion changing the way artists could mm -hmm. like the, the kind of path they could pick because a lot of, you know, w me and you and we, we, we kind of grew up, um, well, grew up, uh, learned to be in this industry, um, you know, be in the entertainment industry. And, and for, for longest time, that felt like that's the way to go. And, and you have to s follow a certain path mm -hmm. in order to become successful. But every now and then, like, if, well not every now and then but m more and more e by each year you can start to see artists that are not necessarily going that route mm -hmm. and instead they are focusing on the aspects of of themselves and social media and mm -hmm. whether they are teaching or mm -hmm. or maybe just producing art and and making videos mm -hmm. about it or stuff mm -hmm. like that and then that becomes very uh, uh quote unquote lucrative yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah for them well, you know mm -hmm. i i do agree with you i mean and that's why, like, for me, whenever I see, like, let's say it often happens when some AI stuff comes out, you know, AI does character design, and we're just like, oh, panicking, we're going to lose our jobs, right? Like, <laughs> and then you question yourself, what exactly my job is, right? Like, there's so many different kind of opportunities these days. You know, like you said, you don't necessarily need to be in film industry to be successful or illustration industry to be successful. You can have your own thing, you know, doing right. internet kind of type of entertainment so there are a lot of venues you can invest your effort into, and there are a lot of uh, different areas you can basically make yourself yourself as a successful person. That's why I think it's a good platform, you know, like social media, and it opens a lot of possibilities. But again, it's all about balance, you know. Like some people, yeah. they tend to go, oh, it's all about social media, which is also not true, you know. You you gotta be, you gotta have something that people will adore and come to you. Otherwise, nobody just follows you on Instagram just because That's you're correct. posting yeah. every day. People come to see you too because they love your ideas or they love your style. So I guess like it's a complicated uh, a combination of things that makes you very appealing to other people. And it's not only about just doing specific type of art. You can be very doing very different things. You know, you can be doing like, I don't know, wooden sculptures and people like come to you because they love what you're doing. Back in the days, you would do the same thing, but nobody would know about you because you would be living <laughs> somewhere like, yeah, the, the, the social, like obviously internet and social media opens so many different possibilities, which is fantastic. That's why I'm always super positive about the industry. If tomorrow yeah. character, character design would be done by some AI, but you will still need people to kind of come up with ideas anyway. So there are a lot of venues, a lot of different things we, we will be able to do and already able to do. That's why it, I'm yeah. very positive about the upcoming future. Speaking of AI, there's this podcast that I've been listening to uh, more and more often uh, done by Lex Friedman. He's actually like, I think he's uh, one of the MIT guys mm -hmm. and he's like super well versed in AI, has like all of the AI, you know, leading uh, programmers and, and figureheads. And the more and more I listen to it, it's like, oh, you know what? Actually, it's not as scary as, it, as everyone makes it, you know? Um, so it, it's, there is still, like, I think we have a long runaway, a run, runaway, 
uh, like the you mm -hmm. know like if 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 you're starting a, an airplane, you have that runoff, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, strip to prepare. Yeah. But it's good to know that it's it's out there. But yeah, uh, gosh, uh, I, I, but well, you know what? I think what scares people off is that they think like, oh, AI is gonna steal our jobs, right? Like, it mm -hmm. will. Some of the jobs will disappear. Yeah, but that's what sure. happened when just Photoshop and 3D animation and 3D modeling came out. A lot of jobs got uh, obsolete, you know, they got outdated and people had mm -hmm. to adapt. So you, you kind of cannot stop the progress. There will be, will be something have, like taking over and simplifying things, you know? Yeah. Uh, but here's I, my... Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I, I it, just, it, you. it just you gives you more room to be creative, you know? Then you can just concentrate less on physically doing something. Like, for example, I was collaborating with NVIDIA guys, they, they're working on this app, uh, Gogan, when you give it yeah. put as a mm -hmm. very kind of simple sketch and it spits out very realistic images. So you like your job as a film concept artist or concept artist in general is not like painting a foreground rock, right? Like mm -hmm. For two hours. If there's a program where you can just click and say, hey, play some rocks here, <laughs> I, I would be happy to use it, right? Then I can concentrate yeah. on the bigger picture, maybe make it an animated feature, you know, just to, it will take over all the quite time consuming stuff and allow me to be more creative. So that's my take on that. Yeah, we, we I remember we were talking about this uh, over at Lightbox. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we're, I think it was Infinity Painters uh, yeah. booth. Mm -hmm. we're, we're just yeah. chatting together. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're sort of like discussing it, but you know, like one of the things that I've noticed, you, you, you've mentioned like, okay, uh, if I have an, if, if, if I could have an app that does this, so I don't have to do it. That's perfect. And people get worried, like, but, but what if that app, you know, replaces all the labor? Mm -hmm. Well, that's great because then your creative ideas will matter the most. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But also I started thinking, and that's why I asked you about social media, because like there used to be this, um, you know, we, we, we spoke about the, the fact that, you know, Photoshop replaced uh, drawing mm -hmm. pretty much in production pipeline. No mm -hmm. one draws anymore. There's just very few people. And I know a few people in the film industry that are really good and fast at drawing. Mm -hmm. And there are some production designers that really prefer that specifically. Mm -hmm. And that's why they are still doing it. But mostly, uh, mostly everyone is either Photoshop or 3D at this point. Yes. Um, but when, when you go on, when you go on Instagram or YouTube, it's complete reverse. Mm -hmm. Like people are actually enjoying uh, like the craft of doing something by hand. Yeah. Instead of like the computer generated stuff, mm -hmm. you know, or like mm -hmm. the, the stuff that is just like, okay, I'll photo bash some, some, something quick, mm -hmm. boom. And it's fast and it looks re it's rendered beautifully. Mm -hmm. People are like, oh yeah, it looks cool. I've seen thousands of those mm -hmm. already, mm -hmm. you know, but super cool sketch with like a nice idea and drawn by hand where I can see the whole process. That's mm -hmm. something like, Oh, you know, I, I really enjoy the sort of the, the artistry of getting there by, mm -hmm. by using those old mediums. And that just became, becomes like more and more attractive to people. Mm -hmm. And, and to me, it seems like with the advent of social media and, and how, how Instagram is growing and, and YouTube and all the other channels, including Twitch, like all of those channels give you an avenue to express what you love the most. And once people realize like. If people see you have a lot of passion towards that specific thing, it clicks right away, I feel. Yep. Don't you think? I, I totally agree. But the key word there was is something you love. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I like often get this question, like what drives you and like how can you manage like still being, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost in my 40s despite the late start, but I'm still very motivated. And I, I just, and I always keep saying the only way to do it is just to love it. You know, when you, yeah like love what you're doing, then eventually people will see it in your work, you know? That's why, like, for example, honestly, like, as much as I love social media, I, like, people know, like, I, I've been very open about this. I was never, like, intentionally doing something to get popular on Instagram or Facebook. And right. it shows I don't have that amount of followers anyway. But I just love doing this, my little cubes and render them in 3D and VR, you know? And then... Whoever enjoys that kind of stuff, they came to me. So if at some point I, will, uh, I, I do enjoy drawing, but I don't have time right now to do it properly. So if, I, if right. at some point I decide, hey, I want to do, get better at this, I will start doing it. And I will be doing it because I love it, not because I, will, I want to get to broaden my audience or something like that. So again, I, I guess there is a balance, you know, once you 
treat it as a formula, which it, it is not. You know, that's why I, I think you, you I, I read it in your stories when somebody asked you if you're reading any motivational books and you decided, like, why would you I read those books? They, they always, like, keep saying about the things that I... You, you know, like, when you read those books, they're all about, oh, you need yeah. to do this and that, and you spend so much time just reading them instead of doing it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. Th- that's why, like, it's the same with uh, social media. You know, like, yes, it's an instrument that can help you, but I don't like to treat it as a formula. You know, I, I love being just passionate about m- what I'm doing. And in the right. end, that kind of uh, draws people who share the same passion and they come and start following you and they appreciate what you do. Yeah, I feel, you know, I started treating social media completely differently this year and like late last year Mm -hmm. than I used to uh, treat it before. And I started to look at it more of, um, what's the best way to describe it? Because business, saying it is just a business, it's it's too raw and too um, sterile. But mm-hmm. it's also not true mm-hmm. uh, because th- that's just not the whole point, right? Mm-hmm. Well, let's put it this way. You have to approach it as business, meaning like nothing's going to like you're not going to have any benefits of using social media in terms of if you want to use social media as a tool to, you know, maybe become more independent as an artist, right? Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen if you're not going to put on, put in the work. Yeah, it's just it's just like the reality is there is an algorithm that runs the show. Yeah. And if you have to conform yourself to the, to the algorithm, and mm-hmm. if you do, then you get more pe- more eyes on your work. That mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that more people will follow it, mm-hmm. but it means more. It's more likely people will see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And then if you're doing something that is expressed by passion, and they mm-hmm. see that you love doing yeah. that stuff specifically, yeah. um, then it will. Uh, it, 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 you have more chances to find people that actually love what you do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the true. same with YouTube and and podcasts and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like you have to use hashtags you have to tag your videos in a specific way you have to use specific kind of thumbnails you have to use specific kind of language in, in terms of uh how you name your videos and that's something i'm kind of lear- learning right now is because the algorithm will highlight it or will not highlight it and then someone who might be a person that is a great candidate to listen to it and then get influenced by the videos or <laughs> by the the content you produce to actually take it and and make something better out of their lives Mm -hmm. might not be able to see it just because you didn't bother to put tags and Mm -hmm. didn't go trending or whatever Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. so it's like in that terms you have to treat it as a business like that's where Mm -hmm. it's like okay there is a specific game that i need to play in order for me to be more visible uh for those who are interested in what i do not necessarily Mm -hmm gain more followers because like you know what followers mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how many people follow you that's true it's that's just true. uh like on youtube for instance there are channels that are have millions of followers but mm-hmm. well maybe not millions, but like hundreds of thousands of followers and they are not doing as great financially as some of the smaller channels that maybe have like 30 40 thousand mm-hmm. but those are like the hardcore like we fucking love you dude yeah, yeah. and we'll do everything for you um agree because like the the name of the game is watch time so how much people engage with what you do how Mm -hmm. genuine you are as a person Mm -hmm. are you expressing the love that you do and are you doing it genuinely or it's transparent that you're Mm -hmm. doing it for like oh i just i'm just doing it because i need to that's not a way to go obviously right that's true that's true Um, but again you made valid points it's about balance you know it's a great tool and it's made for you to expose yourself it's, it has its own rules, so you gotta like use those. But also, as you mentioned, like once you just start chasing that, then it becomes like a, not probably what you would love to do ideally. Yeah, yeah I think we can agree. Uh, like the underlying uh, value is you have to like focus on you and your what you love and how you express it is how people are gonna react to it. That's true. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, I, I like where it's going, honestly, because uh, this is another topic I want to talk with you about. This, it's a large one. This is actually what pisses me off. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> well, not, not, it's not pissing me off, but it's, it's, it's like, it's giving me like, why are you doing that? Like, and in, in, not in a bad way, but it's in like a, more of like a fatherly love way. Yeah. Let's put it this way. Yeah. So like as a dad, I get pissed off if my daughter does something stupid, but then I understand she's a kid and she, yeah. she doesn't know better. 
um, and I don't want to say I, I know better, but um, when people talk about speed of mm-hmm. how fast they, they do the work, right? Yeah. And um, like, what do you think about that? Because I have a very like fatherly, like, don't do that. No, mm-hmm. like nobody can, like, it's only you're bragging towards, uh, you know, the wrong kind of kind of audience mm-hmm. your client's gonna abuse you for that you know mm-hmm. I, I wonder what's your what's your experience with that because i i feel i feel the industry because of the way people like how fast people are and uh and in the ideal scenario I, uh mm-hmm. for example i've picked up this new software i've learned this cool thing mm-hmm. i can do this this thing fast hey, I've done this whole f- whole image in two hours, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's impressive, but hey, you already prepared by learning it. You, you had an idea. It's a perfect yeah. uh, scenario. Now, w- would you be able to replicate that four times more a day and yeah. then for a, for a few months straight, <laughs> right? Yeah, that actually would play a big uh, like karma with you, isn't it? When you start a job and you will not be able to repeat it like four times. The- right. Okay, so, well, there, there are different takes on this, which I think, like, it, it, a little bit opening that uh, theme would be great. So, I actually was thinking about just today. Like, I saw someone posting, oh, I did this image in two hours. I was like, damn, next time I I do something, I want to do an image and say I worked for a month on it. Let's see how that what looks like. <laughs> Seriously, I was like thinking about it. Not in a bad way, you know, it's not. It's yeah. like the artist yeah, yeah. posted it. was like, great and the image was fantastic. I just, it's not the speed which with which you do something what is important, especially when you're working on something design-driven, you know. It's actually the speed of decision making what makes a difference, you know. Like when right. all, often when you record a video of yourself drawing, it feels like you're drawing fast, and you watch it, you go, like, "Oh my god, I'm so slow!" Actually, you know, <laughs> like even resizing a brush, like that, 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 like. But it's decision making is what matters. You know how many times right. you decide, "Oh, my color is off, my composition is not uh, balanced, and stuff like that." Those are the things that are important because you know, w- working on projects. Physically, you will always be given time to do something like to draw or finish, to work it up or whatever. It's all about like every time you're doing these micro decisions w- where it is important. And this right. is where this is where I train myself to be faster. Like I, I like I've been teaching this and I also been sharing this technique where I set up a timer, like let's say 15 minutes to mm-hmm. accomplish something, but not because I want to be super fast. I just want to decide things faster. You know, I just want to like, be very expression driven, you know, like if I'm doing a quick sketch, I want to be to create something that is quite expressive, you know, and having a time limit helps me first to stay focused and also to just like, okay, I need to do this in 15 minutes and you train to be faster, but not faster in the way you just make crazy quick brush strokes, you know, but faster in the way you decide on something, you know, it's either composition, color or design choices and stuff like that. So, but then, yeah, I, I, I I'm not bothered by by it like that much, but uh, I also there's there's not much difference if if it was done in three or four. I actually oh, like now I'm sculpting. Like recently I was doing this cat, and I was cursing like inside my head. Like I was like, why am I so slow? Like I see all the ZBrush guys doing it fantastic. Like in ten minutes, you see like Graf Grassetti like pop pop pop. It's just ten minutes. It's like oh, I have to listen to the episode. It's yeah, like I should. Rough. I should. I saw it just recently. Yeah, yeah. You, you, it will dispel that myth for you right away. Yeah, it's so. No, it looks like great. And I was like, I'm so slow. But I always keep reminding myself, I'm slow now. The more I do that, I will get faster. I don't need to be a speed sculptor, but at least my decision may. I think like I'm losing right now a lot of time in decision. I, my, I make a wrinkle and I go, oh, is it right? Control Z, do it again. So this is what right. matters. You know, like because when you're working on jobs, uh, yes, the the final the image is as a final output is what clients see, but you go through tons of different challenges. You know, like how can I pr- make perspective look right when I have this design driven object that I have to also design and make everything look nice. The light needs yeah. to be realistic and all this stuff. And on top of that, they throw feedback, right? They go like, "Can you change that?" So if you're working, if you're yeah, decision before you making, make your decision, yeah, or it's already changed. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's why like quick, fast decision making also allows gives you room for changes you know for any kind of feedback so that, that's why like uh, i think speed is important but it's not the actual speed of doing something well unless right. you're doing something for three months that's a problem but <laughs> if you like you that's why i think i feel that's what makes me as an artist 
feel tired in the end of the day, not because I was moving my Wacom pen, you know, or my mouse. It's because I was constantly having these micro decisions to make. And mo most often they were like quite stressful situations, you know, like I have to decide on something. Like you put this color and you know if it's a wrong choice, they will they could reject it, you know, or the, right. the wrong shape you're working on and stuff like that. So, yeah. But obviously there is some certain type of work that are faster to do in different packages. But again, it's not, I, yeah, it's not something I probably would brag about, I guess. I'm just, right. try, I'm well, just, me, trying, I'm just trying to remember if I ever posted something. I did this in two hours. But <laughs> I, think, I, I think everyone of us did that one, yeah. these ones. So it's not like I'm saying it because I'm, I'm you know, you, oh, like why you're doing it. I mean, I, mean, I, did, I did that myself. You okay, know? <laughs> I already told you the one that pisses me off is 100%. Yeah, like let's say 100% medium or 100% graphics, 100% Z. Who the fuck cares, right? Like, <laughs> what about that photo? Like, what about like sharpening you did in Photoshop? Then put it in, right? One one percent Photoshop, right? So <laughs> it's just it's become so ridiculous, right? Like, and yeah. some people, some people, it is it has some sort of importance, you know, because they ask you, they go like. Oh, could you break it down? How much of Photoshop or and how much of 3D is there? It's like, oh my God, it's little, almost like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a police department, you know, being questioned about my work. But again, I, I would say, I since I ever started doing this, I prefer to focus on more positive things. You know, there's a lot of things happening right. here and there. But I also do believe it's a bit, mm, not dangerous in a way, but it doesn't touch me as an artist because I'm, I have a quite a good experience. You know, you can filter certain things, but when you're just starting out and I can see potentially seeing some, an image and seeing like I did this in 10 minutes could put a big self doubt in here. Right. You go like, shit. Right. Out. That's why I'm, that's why I'm uh, yeah, trying tr to start this subject. I tried to do some, something similar and it took me a week to do, you know, that's why for younger, younger, younger artists, it's actually, could potentially be very tricky to digest that kind of idea that in, two, in 10 minutes or an hour or so. But again, people say whatever they say. You know, we, we were talking about actually hashtags. I'm so horrible. I Not because I don't know what to say. I usually actually don't know what to say. I, I have the work that I did and I think about oh, what shall I post, right? <laughs> there was a period I was so frustrated with myself because I just couldn't come up with the title for my images, right? I started putting a hashtag Turkish kebabs Man, they work because people would come in as like, why are you posting a picture of kebab but there's no kebab, right? So, <laughs> I was just I was like, yeah, just me being stupid, you know. Yeah, there's a ways to tag. Uh, I'll tell you after we're done. Yeah, you should. Done with this. I have um, like, my knowledge. It's not that difficult. It's yeah. like you can you can find it in like a quick Google search. Well, uh, probably people. Well, I know the logic says just when, make one list and just copy paste, but I'm always so not lazy i always type them like from scratch like i do one two and there's uh, no, I yeah can't. you don't have to there, there's there there are apps that do it for you like oh, you really? can literally there's there's an app that does it i, I can't uh, remember the name of it but it's just basically you can you can set up like uh templates or mm -hmm. or even yeah there, i'll out I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it after yeah uh yeah anyone who's like interested just one google search will, or even just like uh search on the app store it will find you will find like 10 apps that that, that, that do it for you uh, yeah, that's the one of the kind of like, uh, do you want to do that labor or you can just use an app that, that does it for you? You know, you might not have a full yeah, crafty sure. control, but then, uh, um, no, it's not know. because I want to have a full crafty control. I just, right. I would always just type, you know, there's almost like an old, old man, you know, it's like, yeah, squinting, <laughs> just the typing. It was like, yeah. I'll yeah, but, but okay. So going back to, you know, the minutes or, you know, mm -hmm. decision making, how, how much you think it can like. How much you can train yourself into that because i you know obviously there is a limit on how faster you can get right mm -hmm. but then there's also a question okay do you want do you want your work day look the way that after every single day of work you're exhausted because you've had to make so many mm -hmm. decisions and how is that influencing your creativity as well because it's one thing to become more productive in a way okay i can make decisions faster but does it mean that my decisions are actually the, the right decisions or are they just decisions to make my productivity better? You know, mm -hmm. I, again, I, oops, you disappeared. No, don't worry about it. Oh, your camera. camera that's turning. Yeah, man, I, I enjoyed looking at you. Uh. Uh, so, yeah, for example, I would say when I do that kind of timer based exercises, it's more uh, sort of an exercise, you know, you know, when you have right. like fighters 
prepping for fight, they do all this crazy like condition exercises, right? Yeah. Just to make yeah. sure that they prepared. And but I also try what, what I'm trying to do, I try to eliminate what causes me to be ineffective, basically. Like for example, one of them, like I just recently was doing my course and students were amazed how I use like literally three, four layers. Mm -hmm. And they were like, Oh, but like well, I have a tendency to use like hundreds of those. I, I when, whenever it's, I need them, I do create layers. But I just felt like the more layers I have, the more hesitant I, be I become. You know, you start moving layers. Okay, right. you move this particle to the right, one pixel left, and you're just losing so much time. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna flatten it. And if it's something is off, I'm just gonna cut it off. You know, with content and aware fill, you can just fix it very quickly. You know. So just yeah, we're very similar that way. And I remember when 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 we were working together eight years ago, you had those hundreds of layers. <laughs> yes, I don't anymore because I realize it just becomes very difficult. You know, I was like, okay, I'll just do it on two, three layers. You know, so yeah. And again, to, to exercising with time, it's just one of those things that I'm trying to do to make sure that next time I do a real job, I will just do it, concentrate on what matters basically, and. Uh, and also my problem is my focus is very terrible. Like I start doing something, I can be distracted easily by anything. Like YouTube video, a message on Instagram. Also, like I'm really terrible. That's why like I put those timers for myself. So at least for an hour, I can just concentrate on the job. And then obviously I let it go. I, I go and do some social media stuff and look or like do some something extra and then i come back so basically it helps me like setting up timers helps me to stay focused for a certain amount of time that's basically my thing yeah yeah um yeah i, I you know i've noticed one of the reasons why i'm mentioning this is because mm -hmm. you know uh i think i had that conversation way back when uh with nick jindra mm -hmm. when we were you know he was we were working together at naughty dog and um we, we were jumping on like i think he was one of his first film projects and there was a bunch of other is instances like that but my, my like i always found this advice where you know how it is you you, you join a project right like this, mm -hmm. this is a brand new film or, or video game or whatever it's like you're super excited this is gonna be awesome right mm -hmm. and then because you want to prove yourself you're like working that extra time mm -hmm. and like really a you're excited so you're gonna have more ideas obviously but you are like trying also to prove yourself and you're working that extra time but then over time you get more tired and then like after like three four weeks that 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 magic around this whole new thing just becomes a reality where okay this is just another project right now right because mm -hmm. i've done the exciting part now i'm kind of dealing with maybe changes and whatnot and and sometimes you get like a new assignment that sparks the whole the mm -hmm. whole thing again mm -hmm. but I, I, my experience is that you're gonna have at least a couple of points in the project where you're like you were like at least one third of your productivity mm -hmm. than, than your normal productivity because you're just tired right yeah yeah but then if you're over um like you don't want to under uh, perform, obviously, mm -hmm. but if you're overperforming, then you're setting up a standard for the rest of the project. Yeah. Because then the expectations, okay, this is how fast you work. Mm -hmm. This is the ideas you come up with. If two weeks from now, like all of a sudden your ideas are bad and mm -hmm. you're slow, mm -hmm. like, hey, dude, what's happening? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I I know what you mean. I I just recently had it. Like I, I was working on something and I really wanted to do it. And this was something I wasn't exactly sure how to do it. So right. I stayed up for, till 6 a.m. for three days in a row. And I, I pulled it off. I did it. So they saw it. Oh, that's great. And obviously, once the things got approved, I had to t take it easier slightly. They never said anything. But I just felt like, dude, if they look at my performance, it looked like I... I I was able to accomplish so much in just in three days, but obviously I was staying up till like 6 right. a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean, but you know, like you probably will confirm it. The, the reason why I love film industry uh, is the fact that the projects are quite short term, you know, like unless you start doing like a crazy series that you have like five seasons to do. It's usually like mm -hmm. four or five months, six months, and then you swap to something else. So or even shorter than that. Yeah, There'll yeah. Be projects that well, were two weeks I, and like yeah, gone. I guess, <laughs> yeah, I guess on average, you, if you get like projects, it would be three, four months. A couple of months. Yeah. yeah. And that's why the turnaround is pretty fast. So it kind of keeps you fresh. And yeah, it's a good thing to have. I, I personally yeah. have a work in game studio, so maybe I would love that too. But 
you know, working on a game for five years, I don't think. <laughs> there is there is one only one aspect that I I mean everyone's different right there's yeah. people there are people that just love to work on one thing for like forever <laughs> and that's just the way they are um but there is one aspect that makes it very exciting or not exciting is the wrong word but very calming is it's the fact that if you're on a if you're working in a studio on like an in an established studio where you feel happy about your work and happy about the environment you're in it's one thing to work in a studio that you're really enjoying and one thing and the other thing when you're working in a studio that is just that like you hate your days, you know, oh, and you're grudging to get to work. That We're not talking about that. No, no, absolutely. We're talking about best case scenario where you're working for a, for what is a big or small studio, but you're working on an, an exciting projects with, with lots of good friends. You have a good quality of life and you're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. um, it it makes everything else easy in your life because you're not stressing in between projects. Like, okay, what's going to be in the next thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And now, I don't know if you've noticed that, but for freelancers, especially in film, films become, from from what I've noticed, more seasonal, mm -hmm. meaning you, you're going to have, uh, you're going to work on a project mm -hmm. and you're going to get a, like 20 phone calls or 10 phone calls or like five phone calls, whatever, or, or, or emails. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants something from you. And then if you don't pick that, you there might be like three months of no one no one reaching out mm -hmm. and then again like september or whatever comes in and there's like five people asking hey are you are you, are you available yeah so it's not as spread out in time yeah and that that introduces that extra stress where oh yeah you know where it's like well if i don't you know if i don't pick that one extra thing that's you know it's going to make my the end of this project very difficult and the mm -hmm. beginning of of this project very difficult yeah but i can like roll in from in be in between the projects then i might not be you know in a situation where i have more stable or like less mm -hmm. stressful environment for the next mm -hmm. few months and that just becomes like this very like even even and you know this like once you're on a certain level people reach out to you because they want to work with you mm -hmm. whether they worked with you before and know you and 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 have a trust that you can do the, the mm -hmm. work or if you know your work just speaks for itself like if you don't take this one phone call you might be able to take another one right mm -hmm. and, and usually it's like you, you you stress out but at the end of the day it just works out yeah um it's a little different when you're when you're not in that spot i don't even want to think about that because i i haven't been in that spot in forever yeah so so for me it's very difficult to tell you like what if the phone calls are not coming like I would I wish I would I could tell something else than hey just make your work better yeah. you know mm -hmm. but I, I I just don't know yeah the, um I but know, you know what I, I mean right yeah, with I like totally, the stability of work yeah I totally understand you and this is where like you know when people ask me freelance or studio work there, there are pros and cons like you said like yeah. I was I worked in the studios and I had so much fun you know it was like fantastic first you surround yourself with the guys all the time yeah, uh, they're super talented. There's always fun stuff, um, but obviously you don't have a luxury to basically you don't like you. You can't just like there, there are mornings you mornings when you wake up and you just don't want to go to work, right? Yeah. You just cannot do that. Or you just I, don't want to wake up and want yeah, to sleep, that's sleep what, over. yeah, that's as well. But then freelancing also gets could potentially get very stressful just the, from the reasons that you mentioned, and also yeah. occasionally, especially when you're starting out to like starting start to work with someone you never worked before you know like you don't know what the expectations are and you just like you need to learn find out what exactly they want you know with frail like with the studio work as well like you can work for two hours and show the art director or whoever is leading the project hey what do you think they can always drop you a couple of tips right uh, right but when you're doing as a freelancer you're basically like guessing and that's for me i don't know how it works for you for me, eventually it turns out that I'm doing more work because I'm trying to secure all the ends, you know, like I'm trying to do a few versions just to show the variations, something like that. And you kind of like, once you do a few reviews with the client, you get what they want and then it goes smooth. But that right. beginning phase, you know, could very get, stressful. Yeah, could get I agree bit, with you. A bit bumpy, you know, and yeah. So yeah, you're trying to find the rhythm, like what kind of language the director or production designer mm -hmm. speaks, you know, am mm -hmm. I doing like... Do you like if I work that way or, or, or if I work that way? Mm -hmm. And that that's just like, oftentimes it's just like relying on, on your strengths and then showing those will usually do the best. Mm -hmm. Because if you're trying something completely different that you're not used to, you might yeah. not be as, as productive or not yeah. as good at it. 
Uh, but it is stressful because like, you know, I've never worked with that person. Like, I don't know if they like this kind of work or that kind of work more, mm -hmm. you know. And also because you're not seeing r r raw emotions, right? You're just seeing yeah. text. You don't know. Maybe <laughs> the guy was smiling when he wrote that. You never know, right? Yeah. You're just like reading between, trying to read between lines. And yeah, it's that's why it's. But again, I I do agree. Like all every time you 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 have those kind of stressful situation and you pull it off and it doesn't, why was I worried? I can do this, right? It's just right. like it's like it's a nature of creative job because creative job is so subjective. You know, it's not not something you can touch. It's just imaginary world. That's why yeah. we we often feel like uh, maybe what we're doing is not what they want from us, and maybe I'm not as good as I am as I thought I am. You know, and all sort of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, studio. I, I I'm definitely getting back going back to studios at some point to S Studio. I did last year. I did this fantastic project for uh, BBC last year. It was like five months in studio. It was great. So cool. I I would possibly prefer it on and off. You know. Also. Yeah, like, that's a good, finding a balance, right? Like mm -hmm. just doing a little bit on, a little bit off. You know, it all depends. Yeah. Like, I guess it depends what kind of people you work with. What's the project? You know, that's true. all of those things. Well, I have a good tell. Whenever my wife, my wife tells me, like, "Look, you're becoming very annoying. You should go and work for a studio." I go, "Okay, I get it. I should get out of the house <laughs> because I work from home." You know, and like sometimes, like, I sit all the time here doing stuff, and she doesn't like it. She's like, "Okay, we'll go and work somewhere." Right. Yeah. Yeah, once you get like, there's there's a point where it's like mm -hmm, you're kind of annoying. Like, <laughs> you need to get out. Definitely, yeah. that happens. Uh, yeah, I've recently picked up. I mean, I've been working uh, with Marvel um, on the show in the studio. Like, I, I only commute like half a week because mm -hmm. I'll, I'll have uh, all the other obligations. I cannot commit mm -hmm. the full week. It will be just mm -hmm. impossible for me to do. Um, but I, you know, I, I, I always thought like I'm probably never gonna go back and work in the studio because I just enjoy working from from my own like mm -hmm. the luxury of my own place. I don't get interrupted too much. I can find my flow. Uh, but it was a, it is. I mean, it still is a pretty refreshing experience because a, you know, I haven't been working in a studio for years now, so that was like a very cool like a change of pace mm -hmm. in a way. Um, but also it's just a production designer that I'm, I'm working with. He's yeah. just like one of my favorites and I just couldn't pass on that opportunity. Um, yeah, that was, that was, it is fun. It is fun, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting to a point. I mean, you know how the films, especially in, 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 um, in LA, the way they work is, uh, you know, they will be done in LA studios somewhere like whether it's Sony, Marvel, you know, mm -hmm. Warner Brothers and whatnot. The studio, the usually studio starts the art department over there, and then eventually it moves to like a location, right, mm -hmm. where they start building sets and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, you know, um, so eventually that's going to happen with with my project, where they are going to go on location, and mm -hmm. and um, and yeah, uh, and you know, I'll be working from home, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I I know what you mean because the, like whenever we we call it working on set here, so maybe. Right, it's yeah. Different in 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 because uh, in US. London, like, what, what usually that's where it goes, right? Like, it actually goes from US to London or like f to Atlanta or to no, Vancouver well, and whatnot. It, it but there, there's films that are done f f from start in, yeah, in London yeah. now so as well, the, right? Yeah, so a lot of films, man. It's been yeah, it's yeah, been yeah, like yeah, that yeah. since I started probably working here, and all the studios they have, all the set locations are so far away, man, like forty miles from London. And imagine like, how long does it take you? Well, when I was in Jurassic World, I was on the opposite side of the town, so <laughs> it would take me two hours each way, and that's when that's everything horrible. went smooth. You know, when you walk in and there is a train, you walk in and you change the train and blah blah blah. But occasionally you will have like you just arrived Pickups. and like train departed like ten like a minute ago. You have to wait. There was one time there was a also it was on the way next to Wembley Stadium. They occasionally would have like concerts or some band singing or like uh, matches dude when that happens it would go up to five hours every day <laughs> like, it was oh my god i was killing get and, out of here well the good news this is when i started learning blender because i was just on my phone watching tutorials but then right. also like first you could go like oh i'm gonna have four hours i can just uh, put my videos on and just watch it nah that's not you're so dead tired after uh, working yeah. there for Day, all you want to watch is maybe a couple of UFC knockouts or something like that. Just, like, <laughs> just 
<laughs> just to sleep well. Yeah, it's mm. it's quite powerful. That's why a lot of guys who work on set, like I have a few friends of mine, Joan, Matt, Matt also, they, they actually live outside of London, like closer to those studios, so they can commute right. faster. Yeah. Yeah, five hours sounds horrible. Two hours sounds a lot. It's it um, crazy, man. Yeah, on the bad day, I have one and a half hours, dude. I'm I'm so exhausted. When I, I get in the morning, I get in the studio in the morning, so I feel like I already I've I've done a whole day of work just because of the commute. That's yeah. that, that's the that's the annoying part, you know. If it's the studio is far, and in LA, dude, the traffic yeah. is so bad yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. I know. Pretty much, you're gonna be in the traffic all the time. Well, that's partially again one of my uh, American experiences. I and obviously I've seen it on in movies. I I heard a lot about it. Like you know, they say you have to have a car in LA. I was like, what? Oh like, yeah, you can't walk. Yeah, yeah. I was like, no, no. <laughs> and I'm far. like, you know, Europe is so compact. You know, like I I love Europe. Like you 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 can walk. You go to like France and Paris. You can walk everywhere. So which is great. That's why like. Well, you need a car all the time? Nah, not my type, probably. But then saying that, maybe one day. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, like, the people don't realize downtown LA, like, when you look at movies, oh, it's so close to the ocean. Ah, it's actually 10 miles, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not that close at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's uh, traffic. It's going to take you anywhere from, like, if there's no traffic, that's 15 minutes, that's fine. If there's a traffic, that's an hour away. That's not close at all, you know? No um yeah it can get dodgy it can get dodgy uh dude um i think we're good to start thinking about wrapping it up we've we've covered a lot of topics yeah yeah we uh, did. i do want to get into questions because there's so many of them <laughs> yeah let's do it straight away. <laughs> that's gonna take a chunk of our time uh, i will read the first one that comes from patreon from nikita uh, she actually mentioned that she met you in kazakhstan when you were doing a probably some talk over there yeah uh anyways uh her question was um how do you, how important you think vr is for character for character artists uh well again important is probably not the the right type of question because in the end what what importance is the final design of it right right so how you may, like usually when you work none of production designers or if unlike they are very curious about it they wouldn't ask you how did you do that right they all, all it's all about final yes. and, and product mm-hmm. But what is interesting, um, by the way, I think Nikita, it's man name. It's not <laughs> because you like, think? yeah, I think so. I don't know. I yeah. honestly, anyway, it's just probably, because probably of this her person or, her, or him or listening. anyway, whoever well, Nikita, you are, no Nikita disrespect. Is a, That's a man yeah. name. So is it? Yeah, it but is. But there's this movie, Nikita, you know, yeah, that movie no, no, with, the, the, with the killer. Yeah, but not in Russia. So uh, uh yeah, right not i mean in russian speaking countries okay. nikita is uh, the man name so yeah that's something to learn yes um, exactly so basically but what makes we are very interesting i think is the fact that uh you actually almost like drawing your characters you know that's why like i always my experience with vr you actually have 2d guys uh enjoying it more than 3d people for some awkward reason, but I, I don't find it awkward. I do understand why, because normally like when 3D guys, let's say you have, you pick up a 3D sculptor, he goes into VR, there's, there are no tools, like like if you compare like ZBrush to like medium or gravity scale, it's so different the way you operate with it, the, the way you kind of use the tool. Uh, but 2D guys, they actually draw and now they have this ability to do it in, in 3D VR space, you know? And it's great for characters because you can just create this, character design but not like in t-pose you can make it straight away like in action poses because you're doing stuff in vr is so much better so i don't think it's important for character design but does it open new possibilities and that does it make it easier and more intuitive to to use oh, absolutely i 100 percent. it just yeah. doesn't it doesn't have that final finished look uh, that you can achieve, for example, in with traditional digital sculpting inside the three D code blender or ZBrush. But this is where I, I, like, I keep getting pissed off by the fact that people want to do everything in one package. No, just be smart. Use the program what it was made for. Like, if VR makes more gestural, more kind of expressive stuff faster, use it for that part. Then just export it and then continue it refining with the programs that are made for this, right? Like ZBrush is made to kind of come up with the crazy, super high fidelity details. It is good for that. Then you just stop at some point and you start using it. So 
Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Next question. Those are going, to, there's going to be a few from Instagram. Um, how to get good ideas without feeling like a hack reference and inspiration to originality. Oh man, that's a difficult one, isn't it? It's a loaded one. (laughs) Yeah, it's a loaded one. I, you know, good ideas, uh, it's a very subjective again topic, you know, like it depends, like most, most of the time it depends on your brief, you know, you get a brief and then you start coming up with the good ideas. Maybe by by good, they meant like original ideas, I guess. And again, it's a, a very difficult subject as well because we always try to come up with these original ideas and sometimes we spend too much time to come up with these original ideas instead of coming with something that addresses a specific like task or a specific uh, point, you know? Like it's, you know, like it's almost like with personal projects when you start out, you want to do something special, you know, you want to kind of do a project that will be the, the best one and the most unique one in the world and then you ended up never doing it because you just spent too much time <laughs> looking for those ideas. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a complicated question. I, I don't have the, a, the Pinterest a, curse where you're only doing boards and not really finding, like, not really using them uh, as an inspiration, but as a hack of like, oh, I, I got this, this, and this. This is a good collage of what I'm going to do, you know? Exactly. I guess the, the bottom line, uh, you got to have a problem to solve, you know, to come up with a Because when you're right. looking for a problem to solve, it could be a visual problem or it could be a storytelling problem or any kind of design problem then mm-hmm. there's a better chance that you will come up with idea which will be driven by certain factors. This is where right. the idea becomes unique because let's say you want to do a vehicle that hovers over deserts, right? That's a problem you have. And now you start coming up with different images, but not just random stuff, which just kind of looks cool, but because that will make solve some certain uh, specific problems uh, that you have to face in, in, in your task. So. I would always start yeah. from that and I will specify a problem and then that will drive my Pinterest board or my reference uh, research phase and then I will start bringing it all together. Yeah, I feel like references are good for filling filling the blank, you know, like, mm-hmm. okay, I, I have an idea what I want to do. I, I, you know, okay, this is going to be this kind of environment, this kind of setting and those kind of characters now i'm not sure about the details of it you know like what kind of lighting or how is the lighting that i envision is actually playing out on references let's mm-hmm. pull pull that up and see what's going on there uh you know i want to have a medieval character what's the armor really looking like because mm-hmm. I, I i vaguely remember it from my head but mm-hmm. it would be good to know what what the texture looks like where the dirt is you know all that kind of stuff or how the armor pieces are connecting like that's that's the good way to approach the references where it's just filling in the the, the blank spaces but your general idea is in your head mm-hmm. yeah especially like when as a designer you know like we are like the the stuff we have to design is so different you know one day you have to design something that looks like a horse right i don't want to right. paint a horse from scratch because i'm not a horse specialist right or you and then you just look at the reference you understand it and you just like get all the like important parts that you need from the reference and that's what the reference is made for you know like you're just filling those gaps like you said you're trying to learn from yeah. it what you're not uh you don't know much about it uh, about and then basically fill those gaps with those references but yep. some strange reason some people consider that as a cheat but good, <laughs> good for good for them <laughs> good for them i guess we're all cheaters yeah we are especially me um them. What is the best attitude to have when trying to improve? What do you think? Uh, just love it, you know. I know it's simple as it is, but we, we, we already talked about it. Because learning, again, it's a physical process. You need to put in hours, you know. And yeah. when you love it, that becomes like a, a fun journey. You, you, you actually enjoy it. Every, like sometimes I would wake up in the morning and I was like, shit, I wanted to do this thing yesterday, but I, I fell asleep, right? It's that, and like, you know, exciting when you actually love it. Otherwise, it becomes like a burden, you know? And actually, there was a, a study uh, where they basically, they took it two groups of people, and one of them were jogging, and the other group was playing football. And they saw mm-hmm. that the guys playing football were having, uh, like, were improving faster because they had because football has a fun element right 
I don't right. know like, if you jog, but when you jog, the fun part is after you finish jogging, right? When you're tired and you get all the endorphins blowing. But when you right. actually jog, most of the time you hate yourself. It's like, why am I doing this, right? <laughs> but football has a fun part of it because it's competitive play. You know, you you people having fun and that's how they progress uh, faster. Same with our industry. Right. When you're doing something, uh, especially learning something, when it becomes your passion and you love it, uh, there is a better chance that you can keep going for a long time, longer time, and actually excel at uh, excel at it. Right, right, right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, unless you compound jogging with something like audiobook or something, and you know, exactly. And then they're like, oh, you have a learning process that's mm -hmm. that's with it. Then then that's a, but yeah, raw jogging. I guess there are some joggers that are like I freaking love jogging. Like, what are you talking about? You know? No, no, no. I I, I love counting my steps. You know, that kind yeah. of stuff. Well, that that's a but on average. No, that's a, also a different level to that. We can add, is that most of the time when you're starting out something, it's actually not fun. Like when you're starting out and your stuff looks like crap, it's not fun, right? Yeah, of it's course. Like, yeah, you love it, but what you're doing doesn't look right, and that's what happened to me. You just need to understand. You need to give it some time. You know? Yeah. Because yeah. it's like going to gym. Like first few months or weeks, you hate yourself, but after that, it actually makes you happy. Uh, it's that first that, workout is the worst. Oh, it's the worst. And this yeah. is exactly by, I think like I read a book about it where it was saying that the, the reason why you hate it, your body basically goes like, hey, dude, don't do this again, right? Because it gets used to the equilibrium that you have. And this yeah. is the reason why everything like aches the next morning because your body kind of tries to tell you hey dude don't do that again you know those apps leave them i don't want to see them right but, yeah and same with the like when you're trying to come up with uh, to learn a new software not because people don't want you they just don't like they want they want you to be where you, you you've been before and that's why like especially making first steps in something is probably the hardest part but trust me like if you keep going at some point it becomes something that you start enjoying and then from there it's just like exponentially you just enjoy it more and more and the better you the more you enjoy it the better the outcome and it just starts rolling and rolling and rolling yeah i agree i agree 100 percent uh here's a good, good question uh that we haven't touched touched on that subject at all any advice for pricing your work as a young freelancer oh man that's a <laughs> that's a hard one, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I'll, it's I'll be straight away very honest with it. This is not my uh, expertise. Like I, because I can tell you the way I started out. I like the very first ever money conversation which I had with a client. It was this Russian uh, art director. He wanted to work with me, and we had a Skype call. And he was like, "Hey, okay, how much do you want?" And I was like, "I'm in my mind, I'm thinking about." 30 slash 40 dollars so <laughs> because i was back in tajikistan so it's a good right. money you know yeah uh, especially yeah. Like 10 years ago and then i saw him typing i was like okay i'll let you go i'll let him come up with the number and then i saw the number it was 500 dude like you know there's this moment in your mind like i'm seeing my bright future you know like <laughs> dancing and stuff like that <laughs> Oh my God! Obviously, I know I was never. We agreed on the price. I I couldn't finish the job because I was just so so amateur, you know, like I just didn't know right. what I was doing. He, he never paid me for that, but then eventually we ended up working uh, later, and then he was actually like, yeah, we did, I did some paid work with them. So mm -hmm. I would also say, and this is a probably ties up with the previous question. When I started out, money was never a priority for me. As long as I wasn't hungry, which I wasn't, like I, I was obviously never let people to use me, uh, never pe pe let people use me, but uh, I was never driven by how much I want to get paid. I was always driven by the the fact that I wanted to to do this for a living, and I just worked my ass off to get better, you know. And eventually, right. again, like I said, it's exponentially. You get better, you have more fun, you get paid more, and stuff like that, and it just starts growing and growing, you know with the time and with your experience. Yeah, yeah m m money talk is difficult because uh, like it's so dependent on the, 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 the kind of qual the, the quality of work you do and there's so, so many different approaches and it's, um, mm -hmm. it just relies on, on what kind of character you are as well. It's, it's, there's just so many layers that a there's simple a lot advice, of 
Yeah. yeah, simple advice just doesn't work sometimes. I think the one advice that can be taken right away uh, that most of people agree is that you should never work for free Absolutely. For, for a project that you know they could pay you for doing it. Absolutely. But but they are trying to like, oh, this is a young guy. Mm -hmm. Hey, we'll, gi we'll, we'll give you an exposure. Mm -hmm. Like don't, exposure means nothing. Honestly, you can get exposure by just posting on social media. You're gonna get more exposure than anyone else mm -hmm. would give you. Mm -hmm. Uh, or collaborating with like mm -hmm. maybe maybe one of the larger channels or whatever is someone who you know really mm -hmm. well and you want to mm -hmm. collaborate. Mm -hmm. That's far better exposure than than anything. I, I've noticed. Uh, I've noticed if someone doesn't want to pay you, and they tell that it will give you exposure, they usually end up not giving you anything, like not even mentioning that that's your work or yeah. just putting it somewhere in the bottom where no one sees it. You know. That's true. That's yeah. True absolutely no that's for sure like because that happened probably to me when i was just starting out there will be people not as they want to get advantage of you which turns out they're trying to do that but yeah they just basically want to benefit from you being inexperienced and be, from the fact right. that you yeah, want to get into advantage. this industry so yeah i guess like my policy was always because i started late i knew i don't want to join this industry as a junior because you know usually juniors they get paid obviously less because of lack of experience and all right. the other stuff but i knew i'm starting late i'm i'm having my family to i, I need to care take out take care of uh that's why I, I i was like okay i will hit the point when they will come to me and they want they will contact me you know there's a difference when you knock the doors and when they come to you so when yeah. they come to you, obviously you can say, "Hey, these are my numbers, right?" So that's a, 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 a that's where it's kind of tricky when you're starting out. You know, obviously you have to knock the doors and you go like, "Hey, uh, can you hire me? Can you hire me? Can you hire me?" So uh, having that in mind, I just try to make sure that my work looks like I'm not a junior, I'm senior, and then obviously everything played out as I I, I think it, it should. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very difficult, but yeah, I, I would say don't work for free, especially if it's a studio that you know they can pay you. If it's like a small project and and you feel like it's an opportunity to create a like like a collabor collaborative um like some some collaboration that will vastly out benefit any kind of monetary uh value you would get out of it, then that's a different thing. But but usually usually that only happens if you're like already have enough experience to to spot okay i, I might not necessarily do do it for money but once it's released and the, the credit is there like people will realize okay damn like that br opens new doors right for you mm -hmm. but it's a very rare I, I know some professional artists that do that like they but but that's their initiative to do something rather than someone approaching them hey do you want to do it right mm -hmm. it's like no 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 we're doing it differently i'm approaching you i want to do something for you because i love your work i love mm -hmm. the way you operate i love your product or whatever whatever that would be mm -hmm. and then i'm doing something for you uh because i know that working with you i'll learn something or it will have vast the better benefit than whatever money you would pay me mm -hmm. over time right mm -hmm. so that that's where it makes sense to me like okay that's where you can work for free because you're you're coming up with an initiative because you want to do something that you normally don't do uh but just yeah like if a big client reaches out like hey we're gonna give you a credit it's like well you have to give me a credit anyways because that's the law right yeah yeah so um yeah, I think we can uh, agree on that. In terms of pricing, it's very difficult because it's just yeah. I mean, there are cer certain bars. I, uh, ben Mauro, Mauro did um, did like the good breakdown. We we talked about it on on his, uh, with him on the previous podcast. Mm -hmm. I think the link for that is there as well, uh, where he broke down like how much you can expect working in certain industries. So that's always a good knowledge to have, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so that when Microsoft. Uh, studios or like Ubisoft or Naughty Dog, whoever approaches like, hey, we want to work with you. You kind of know what kind of rates you can expect, right? Mm -hmm. Versus like, oh, here's 50 bucks. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> you yeah. know, just because you live in like a small country doesn't doesn't mean that mm -hmm. you, you have to be paid way less than, than you would normally get paid. So true. Um, all right. 
let's maybe read two more questions. I'm looking at Facebook questions right now. Um, three of your favorite artists. That's a oh, simple one. Oh, man. That's a difficult <laughs> one. Because... <laughs> I read it, that question. I was like, "Who?" Because you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna read those three, and like everyone, like all the all the other friends, like, "Hey, why you didn't mention me?" Uh. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, then it's better to clarify, like, a favorite artist who living now or like lived some time ago. So, I don't we'll, know. We'll leave it up to you. I I don't know. I it's like I I love like just artists in general. You know, like every artist has different things about them. Uh, they do something that excites me, you know, like, and it doesn't necessarily need to be always like what I do, concept art or something. Sometimes I'm scrolling on my Instagram, I see this guy, he does like some completely unrelated stuff. He's still an artist, but he just does performance and I like it. So I would mm -hmm. say if from like classic artists, like I, I really love Russian painters like Levitan and Serov and uh, our hippo like there there are a bunch of guys that like obviously that's like, three that's you you reached the reach the limit yeah i reached <laughs> the limit yeah let's do let's keep it yeah i'll <laughs> keep it to uh, old painters because there you go nobody gets offended then um another one is a little more a little more elaborated yeah. uh finding energy to keep pushing forward every day consistently with art after spending a decent amount of energy working full-time on unrelated stuff that pays the bills yeah. and how to organize time well and work within the limited time frame to consistently practice art seriously mm. when a big ch chunk of your day is taken away by other responsibilities that's a good one because yeah. that's a pretty much a struggle that vast majority of us either already ha like have or already had mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that's a very good question but i think we kind of <laughs> i did uh, uh reply to it partially when i was talking about that i really love it you know like i just remember myself working for studios i would work eight hours or nine sometimes and i will run back to my computer to sit down and start doing again the same thing at some point, I right, I but but the the, the the question is if you're not an artist, like you you that, work in your regular job, okay, and got it, because that's so, a completely different mm -hmm. subject, right? That that's how I started out. Obviously, I was doing something closer to art, but like I was doing graphic design and art direction. Mm -hmm. But again, then this is very pro probably known. <laughs> how how can I put it together? You have to sacrifice certain things, otherwise it's impossible to do it. You know, right? Because you have to work it's like an endless loop right you have to work uh on a job which you like but, but obviously like you do you want to uh, do something different like like art you there's no lecture you can just like, go like hey i'm not doing this i want to learn art you have to balance it anyway and this is the way i did i had to sacrifice my time which i i have zero regrets that i did it because yeah. most of the time when i remember those times when we were hanging, I was only in my late twenties, and the guys were like, "Hey, let's go and, and um, like we have this club and let's have some fun." I was like, "No, no, no! I need to go and paint for this challenge I'm participating." In. And they were like, "Are you crazy?" But obviously, <laughs> now the tables are turned. They were like, "Shit! Wish we could, we hadn't gone. We, we didn't go to those clubs, and we would we would do the same thing that you focus have. on but, things." Yeah, yeah. I, I had to sacrifice, but obviously there is balance. Like I did certain things. Uh, not the, like wrong when I was doing it. I overdid a couple of the things that I uh, had to sacrifice. There is a balance, but it definitely needs a little bit of sacrifice. Otherwise, it's just 24 hours a day, you know. But that's right. But that's what eventually makes the difference between people who did certain things and people who did not. You know, I think like the way I, the the only probably the only thing I would do differently, I would probably stretch it out on a few more years instead of like trying okay in three years i'm gonna get in i got in but I, it was like a lot of hard work you know i was just like doing crazy hours so i will just stretch it out like let's say not three years five years but man in five years you can do so many things you know even if right after work for an hour let's say you decided to become a digital sculptor you sculpt an hour full of every day for an hour that accumulates to a crazy number of hours throughout like four yeah, five years that's so correct the problem with that you need to just make it consistent habit this is where a lot of us including myself we get we give up you know we start doing certain <laughs> things especially when the results are not coming as fast as we want right 
because like you're doing something that you're not confident with and you're doing something you probably never had education and you know and you're not yeah. getting results that you see online it's discouraging it's definitely it is but i guess like if you keep doing it you will you potentially will get there for sure yeah it's very difficult to stay motivated when you don't see results right exactly. like you, you're putting time it's like is it even worth is it even worth mm -hmm. but then i think the question you can ask yourself is okay let's say it's 2020 right now it's uh, february or actually march 2020 right mm -hmm. we're in like uh, beginning of march 2020 let's uh imagine where we are at in 2021 yes. if we're if we're putting an hour a day 365 days uh, a year right mm -hmm. we're putting one hour towards that that specific goal but we're consistent we're doing it every day for an hour yes we're gonna be 365 hours ahead that's true if, if we didn't do anything yeah uh, like i don't I'm, I'm not a calculator but that's many many days yeah. of 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 like hard practice yeah, right it's, it's that a lot makes a of, giant difference it's a lot of time and again my experience that you know, some people just have natural tendency to to get certain type of things faster, right? right. I I know for like for for like there are guys out there who are better than me in 3D, in painting, in drawing, in sculpting. They just have physical ability to do certain things better. But I think yeah. because you're putting so much, so many hours, maybe you got there. You get there not as fast as they could get but you will get there because you're consistently putting hours and it just scares a lot of people off when you say you you look at someone's work you know when you do portfolio reviews i did it a few times and people don't like it you look at someone's work and you go like dude i think you need another three years to get somewhere and so like, what it's like what do you mean three years like right like three years so like there was a guy i told him you need five years he obviously got offended but he was a friend of mine Right. Now it's been eight years. He never, never get any. Uh, he never got anywhere just because he never even did a year of what I, I think he, right. he had to do. And sometimes, sometimes it might be just a year. Like it might yeah. sound like it's five yeah. years, but a yeah. year, a year from there, you, you find like a different approach, or yeah. you learn as you go, and you realize, okay, you know what? I, I was approaching things in the wrong way, yes. and I've learned it by practicing, practicing it more for a year. But just like here's, he, it's, it's coming back to you what you said in the very beginning where. People are like, they want to get those the tips. Uh, yeah. They they don't focus on like the long term learning experience and getting the foundation and whatnot. And you're only getting tips if you're only looking at at learning process through through that lens. What happens is that you're kind of narrowing yourself to only one way of of working. Whereas if you if you're like, okay, I know it's not there. I need to keep learning. I need to go through foundation or whatever. And then usually what happens is that as you're learning more things, you ask yourself more and more questions. And sometimes you're going to ask the, the right question, which will change your trajectory, even by just a percentage or two percentages, right? But yeah. over a longer period of time, that's a dramatic difference. Absolutely. Uh, and 100%. Um, yeah. And also like just to kind of reinforce what you said, it's not just pure grind, you know, it's not like you need to like for five years, just do one right. specific things nonstop. No you have to have a strategy you know like like you said you do some sometimes you sketch something for a month and then you realize I'm, I'm actually no it's not about sketching maybe i don't know anatomy right and you go step back so actually when you you do that like continuous work for a um, long period of time you go deeper you know you start like getting what to what really matters especially if yeah. you're trying to learn it by yourself you know when, you, when there's no one around you you actually realize now it's not like man. It's it, it will sound funny, but I did it myself. You know Kim Jong Ji, the great. The, the, oh yeah, um, of course. So recent, I just like started doing my iPad stuff, uh, and I saw he 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 did a course. I never done in this in my life, but I did it. You know when they put it out for ten percent discount, like for first mm -hmm. hundred people, I just straight away I bought it. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna learn. Now you were the gonna, first yeah, adopter. Yeah, and I, I looked at the videos. I just I knew it's gonna be that. They are fantastic videos, but it's just basically him drawing. Like, and right. you realize, 
to to be able to do that kind of stuff you need to know anatomy very well and you need to know like how to make forms in 3d space in on 2d planes with the ink and paper and stuff like that so again like most of the time when you're learning this you need to go deep you know down to kind of get all the foundation foundation started out so it's not just pure grind it's not about like just doing sketches for six years or doing sculpting right. for six years it's adapting your strategy going deeper learning fundamentals and that eventually makes you like a complete artist and then again in, maybe in two years you see like you will see the progression and that will start motivating more and more and from there it just like it's become becomes a fun journey yeah it does or uh, or or a realization that that's that's maybe not for you because exactly. that can happen too exactly. yeah 100%. but you need to put in the work you need to put in the work to realize that and the, the faster you do it mm -hmm. like it's better to do something realize it's not for you mm -hmm. and then step step uh, away from that mm -hmm. than doubt yourself that okay like oh it's too much work and then and then be that person that is just regretting that you never tried you know that's true Sure. yeah dude we've been talking for almost two hours now man can you went, imagine yeah it went by past it passed very quickly right yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's good it's good stuff we talked about like you know occasionally i felt like when i was i was having like podcasts before i was always like hesitant maybe i should i shouldn't say something that i think it could offend someone and blah 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 but right now like i'm just being super honest about everything I say, like the the cult thing that I brought up, it could potentially backlash on me. I don't care. I, that's what I think. Like the moment you do the cult thing, you stop being objective. You're gonna get Blender canceled. <laughs> well, I don't care. They know how much I love Blender, and they know how much I help them to promote certain things. But yeah, it's just the other thing we talked about, like 100% medium or 100% blah blah blah. This, who cares, man? Like it yeah. what cares is the end result. And it's actually, I, I think it's stupid to force yourself to do something in a program which, which is not meant to do certain things. So, yeah. And also like we talked about, very honestly, we talked about the motivation and the way you, you put it together that sometimes you do certain things and you realize it's not for you. That's also, yeah. the, could be the case. Like for example, I do a lot of like, workshops and i do i do teach and sometimes i in, at the beginning of every course i tell people you're here maybe just to realize that this is not what you want to do because concept art right it sounds like fun but there is layers of layers of complexities you know we're not painters we're not illustrators sometimes the stuff we do is very rough it's just about the, like problem solving and maybe that's not for you so yeah. but then in the end you have to put in hours so that's why Oh my God, I feel so good because I was very honest today about everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You know, coming back to like your the, the last thing you mentioned, you know, uh, one of the most frustrating, like if we, we've mentioned the the self-help books, you know, like, oh, like why, why what's the next one you're going to recommend? And it's like, it, it reminds me of those Instagram posts about business, like the top business executives do those five steps to become successful. You know what? The, the truth of the matter is, if you don't have, if you're not a good at business, there's only certain things you can learn to be good at it. Yeah. But if you don't have passion for it, mm -hmm. you're never gonna be a business per like that businessman person that's preaching all of those things. 100%. You might learn certain things that will help you to navigate with your finances a little better, like certain, you know, save money or like invest in things. And mm -hmm. but like someone's like invest in those stocks. It's like hey, unless you're like obsessed about stocks, mm -hmm. that's going to be the worst decision you can ever make, right? That's, that's true. That's true. And, um, and uh, or unless you have friends that will help you with that, that are yeah. smart, you know, that that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. But not everything is for everyone. We're all built differently. Yeah. We all have different DNA in ourselves. We all are excited about different things. Mm -hmm. And if someone tells you like, I used to I used to think that way that mm -hmm. by sheer force of push, pushing yourself through ungodly amount of hours you will eventually get to a point where you are a great artist that's not true yeah. that's just simply not true because if you're not excited like if you're not excited about the fact that it's going to be very difficult to do it mm -hmm. there's complexity layers but if not it's if that part by itself is not exciting to you mm -hmm. that should be a, a red light for or a warning sign 
that mm-hmm. says it's either not for you or there are, or, or there are certain other things that are, you didn't solve just yet to mm-hmm. be prepared to step into that realm you know yeah, yeah. so yeah agree it's it's a lot of layers i think like you know it's interesting that i think like a lot of this art podcasts including yours like it got matured in a way you know because I, I do believe like there's no like for some reason I keep always saying like there's there's no like 69 ways to become a successful person. I don't know why the number is always 69. You know those books, right? 69 ways to become the successful. For various reasons, dude. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> I I know like I'm making the number up, but it's always like, dude, there's no 69 of ways. Like there are certain yeah. things people did and they were genuinely loving the stuff that they do and they got successful. There is no blueprint. If this, there was a blueprint and if everyone could become do certain things and become exactly successful as the others, then the value yeah. of this stuff will drop down, you know, like then it will be just it wouldn't be special anymore. That's why right. you got to find your own way. And yes, there are obstacles, but it, is it rewarding in the end? It is. Could you get there? Yes. But then the rest is up on you, you know, because yeah. It's all yeah. about how many hours you could put in. How, how can you build your strategy? Can you be very, very honest with yourself? Like tell yourself at some point, I'm not as good as those other guys. You know, that's also very crucial. You know, be honest with yourself. Realize that you're not at that level and just work, work, mm-hmm. build your strategy, improve, dig deeper, try to take different angles, different opinions on things. And don't be don't be in a cult. And <laughs> <So laughs> don't that, be in a cult. That, that's my final note. I f- I think on that note we can we can wrap it up to sh- wrap up the show. It was a good one. We spoke for like almost two hours. Uh, yeah, two hours fantastic. almost. Again, yeah. thanks a lot for inviting me. You you've been doing this like. Oh yeah, anytime, dude. If you feel lonely, like hey, Maché, I feel lonely. Let's do a podcast, dude. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I rarely feel lonely. I you probably will <laughs> agree with me, but actually sometimes I. have just don't want to talk with anyone. Like, oh yeah, you want to like focus on getting yeah, shit done, you know? Because like you constantly get this barrage of interactions in terms of questions or it, even the job itself, it could be very, occasionally I just like go like, man, I just want to sit down, shut off the lights and just chill out, you know? That's right. my problem right now. Like, you know, when people talk about struggles, I, I struggle with my brain is always running. I struggle so much to shut it off. You know, like that's that's why I started doing a little bit of yoga lately, just to trying to come up with a solution to shut it off. You know, because it's always there's always something running. I always think like, oh, how did I connect the texture and right? Like, there's <laughs> always like this crap that keeping my mind busy, and yeah, yeah. I think it's not healthy. There was this book that I've read. Speaking of self books, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm very measured when it comes to which book I want to pick up and, and, mm-hmm. and read and learn. Mm-hmm. But the one I've learned uh, was reading was call, called Indistractable, Distractible. which is about indis- indistractable, which mm-hmm. is about distractions. Mm-hmm. And it's wrote by, by uh, Nir Eyal. Mm-hmm. He wrote Hooked, uh, which, is, which is a book I read before. It's about how social media, you know, and and companies get you hooked for things like oh that's why that's why you actually come back and do those things over and over like with instagram and then facebook like what what, what are the algorithms that mm-hmm. they use to mm-hmm. to get you like really hooked he wrote that book this one is, is actually talks about exactly the same thing you're talking about like just sort of like zoning out like what should i do and it's not necessarily a, a, a recipes mm-hmm. the the part the part of that book that i that i enjoy Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not necessarily the recipes of like this is the things you need to do in order to not be distracted anymore because that's such a subjective thing it works for one person it's not going to work for for others right but the yeah. part that i l- like about it is it pinpoints or or highlights what actually makes you distracted which is which is where you can make your own conclusions i think yeah that's the best part about yeah. it Awesome. Share a link. I would love to read about. It. Yeah, I'll put it on the on the on the on the notes mm-hmm. uh, for the show as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely, we'll share. Uh, it's a it's a good one. It's not like one of the best art books I've ever read or anything mm-hmm. like that. Don't don't get me wrong. There's mm-hmm. a lot of other books that are are great, but it's it's you know I don't I've read a bunch of like self help books and like those tips and whatnot. All of them, ninety nine point nine percent. Well, I would uh, actually no hundred percent of them are very subjective Man. so you have to take it with a grain of salt um anyways let's wrap it up here um awesome. 
guys i hope you you uh, i hope everyone who's listening to us enjoyed it if you like the show if you like what i'm doing here um just let me know in the comments uh press a like if you want to like it uh, subscribe if you want to subscribe it's really up to you uh what it does it helps the show to be to get bigger meaning reach more people uh and uh get more people i guess um i don't know excited or what would be the best way to say um I, I, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to help everyone. Let's just share my my experiences working in the industry, work, being an artist, and also inviting the people that talk about their experiences as well. I love doing that, and uh, if you can share what I what I share, hopefully more people will see it. So, uh, thanks a lot, guys. Um, yeah, thank you. Till the next time. Big kisses. Cheers. Bye.